Hey everyone, Oliver here. As of currently, I use the law of attraction to manifest my dream life, such as making multiple six figures with my dream career, traveling the world, manifesting my dream partner and dream physique, and so much more. And now I've put everything that I learned about the law of attraction in this over four hour training. And I promise you, it's gonna be the only training you'll ever need to manifest your dream life. So stick around because it's gonna be worth it, I promise. Hello guys, welcome to Manifest Your Dreams Accelerated. This is Oliver with my new course on how to manifest all of your dreams. I needed to close down my old group, but I think this is gonna be even better. So let's dive right into it. Here's what we are going to cover. First, harnessing the power of your mind. Why manifest your dreams accelerator? Course curriculum, like what you will learn in this whole course. Mindset for success and how to get help and support. Yeah, make sure to follow me on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook for exclusive content. I will be also probably rebranding my whole social media, but we'll see. The links are below. Share this course and let's change people's lives. Warning, this is the most important video in the entire course. But this whole course is built on each other, right? So if you miss something, if you don't go through one of the videos, the rest doesn't make sense. So make sure to Watch this video and don't skip, don't fast forward. <clears throat> Pro tip, if you want to be faster, watch it in double speed. That's allowed. And yeah, let's dive right into it. Harnessing the power of your mind. What does that mean? First, I want to tell you a bit like, you know, my mindset and what brought me to success. One of the first things is Think and Grow Rich. This book changed my life. <clears throat> Probably a, a lot of you know it and maybe you already read it. I had the biggest breakthrough when I actually learned from one of my mentors that he talked about Think and Grow Rich and he actually, you know, put it in a more practical way. And when I understood it, it really changed my life and I started manifesting amazing things in my life. Then also like the training balance scale. This is a very important concept. And I want you to understand that because these are kind of the basics, right? This is the foundation for the whole course because if you don't understand these things, it's going to be very difficult to make your dreams come true like making them a reality, no matter what you want to achieve or manifest in your life, it comes from understanding the basics, right? And the training balance scale basically means 99.9% .9 of all success comes from the thinking. Very important to understand that. That's what I believe and it worked for me, right? There are many people that are talking about strategy, methods, tactic, action, all of this is important. But what many people don't understand is like the mindset is first. Because if your mind is not in the right place, you can have the best strategy in the whole world, it won't work for you. It's really like we all experience things like self-sabotage, procrastination, um, overthinking, all these things. They are holding us back and it's in our mind. It all starts here, right? So this is the foundation of all success. I am just to go back, I forgot one thing. The training balance scale, also, was it, also what it means is basically there is the how, right? The how, the action, the methods, the strategies, and there is the what, the why, the thoughts, the emotions, the intention, the dream, the vision, all these things, right? It's like you can imagine it as two parts. And yeah, as I said, most people think it should be like 50-50. You should learn equal amount of mindset, you know, the what, the why, the vision, the thinking, an equal amount of the how, what to do, the strategies, the action steps, all these things. But that's kind of the myth. It's a myth that keeps you broke and it keeps you at the place where you're at. It's not the strategy that's gonna change your life, it's the mindset. So we are doing a lot of mindset work here so that you, your mind is in the right place so that whenever you wanna do something, that you actually can do it and you will be successful, right? Because there are many things that we wanna achieve and do but again, if the mind is not in the right place, it's not going to work. This is the most important thing. So that's why I'm really excited about that because I guess we have a lot of artists here as well that follow me and that are in this course because they saw the success I had with my art, which I will talk about later. But this was because of my mindset. Yeah. And some of you or like a lot of people don't want to believe it, but it's really true. Everything is energy. Where focus goes, energy flows right? That's very important because it's really true. Like the universe is made out of energy frequency, right? It's like vibrating in different frequency, everything, right? It's like the material, like the, the table, your, your mind, your body, the things you want in your life, the money, the success, it's all, it's all made out of the same thing. It's made out of energy, right? 
So that's why it's very important to understand as well that everything is energy and that if you understand that, you know where energy is coming from. You know, like first it's you. Your thoughts are energy. They are like, you can almost say like they are kind of like a frequency. So when you think about negative things, you, you tend to attract more negative thoughts which then start to manifest in your reality. The same with positive things, right? So if you start focusing on positive, you start getting more positive things in your life. The law of attraction. So that's kind of the base, the base of this whole course. It's the law of attraction. It's the most powerful law in the universe, which, always is, which is always working. Some of you heard the law of attraction. Maybe some of you don't understand it. You think it's not working or it's not, you know, it's just woo-woo, but it's the foundation of everything in our life and it's absolute it it's there it works always now if you have negative things in your life it's because you attracted them that's not to say that you should be should um build up yourself beat yourself up that's the right english sentence <laughs> it means just like be aware of it right because if you attract the bad things in your life you can change it you can start creating more positive things in your life if you start to use the law of attraction uh, the law of attraction in your advantage okay and then, yeah, misunderstanding the law of attraction. As I said, that's kind of the biggest thing why people fail, because they don't fully understand the law of attraction. They don't fully understand how it works, and so they cannot really use it to their advantage. And sometimes, you know, the law of attraction basically gives us 100% responsibility, which some of us, we don't want to take that, because it can seem like a lot, but we always have to see that we are literally, we are the creator of our reality. So if you want to create good things in our life, you also have to take responsibility of the bad stuff that we created. And we can change that at any time, right? Whenever we, we, we make the switch, we understand, we take 100% responsibility for how our life looks like, that's when we can make the, the shift, when we can make a, the change, okay? So why manifest your dreams accelerator? Let's talk about it. So my story, but that's why I'm doing it. That's why, yeah, why I do manifest your dreams. It's because of my story. I went through a lot of, you know, difficult situations. Didn't have a easy beginning. And you see a happy picture of me. That's been, I think, one, two months ago in Bulgaria. I became a completely different person and attracted a lot of things. So let's go get into my story. So the destruction of addiction. I grew up in a household where alcohol was a problem, right? There was a lot of addiction and also abuse, emotional abuse. So I, I kind of had a hard start into the world and even, you know, at one point didn't want to live anymore. And of course, like since usually addiction goes through the family, my family, my grandparents especially, they were always afraid of me being also an alcoholic and it was really hard. It was, it was almost like, you know, people are against me, they don't believe in me. And I, I kind of just, it, it just was very, very hard for me to get started, you know, with being positive. I was very negative and very sad and very, like sometimes literally depressed, right? And I learned a lot about it. I learned a lot about myself and addiction in general. And I never became addicted to alcohol, never, because I made a decision that this is not going to be my life. Then I grew up in a boarding school, so with eight, because of this, these problems in, in my home, I needed to go to a boarding school. It, that's actually the house I was living in. It's, it's a very like kind of old, how do you say, like an old village in Switzerland. And this is me and my friend in the, in the boarding school. And in the back you can see the, actually the house I was living in. Um, I was very, like right, at, at this point in my life I'm very grateful for what I learned there and I can see why I was there and why it was necessary and why it was good for me. But you know, when, when I was in there, especially in the beginning, it was very hard for me. I was eight years old when I went into boarding school and my brother was six years old. And it was in the beginning very, very tough. Also tried to find my way. And um, yeah, I did my best. I think I was eight years there for, yeah, for eight years until, until I was 16 or 17 and then I left the boarding school. So most of my life I grew up in a boarding school without my parents. Then after the boarding school, that was around in 2013, I got into the wrong circles. You see like the, the guy on the left with the nice suit, that's me. <laughs> and it was very, very tough because I really wanted to go out, go out of the boarding school because I was eight years there. I wanted my freedom. I wanted to 
you know, explore the world and see what life is outside of this boarding school. And I got very fast into the wrong circles and it was very, very tough. I don't want to go too deep into it, but it's been not a good time. It was very destructive. And also I had to deal with, that's actually the first time in my life I needed to deal with my addiction. And again, I don't want to go too deep into it, but that's where I was. And at one point I was like, I have to find a way. Then th There must be more to life than just that, right? Just going party on the weekend. And I was working as a salesperson in a clothing store, which was also had nothing to do with my passion or my talents or anything that I actually wanted. And I was really wondering like, what is there, like there must be more to life. What's the purpose of my life? What's the purpose of being alive? And then I found the secret. At one point I found the secret. I even showed it to my friends. Many of my friends, they, you know, they actually really, really liked it, but it didn't have a lasting change. Also for me not. For me, it actually gave me the, it gave, gave me the hope that change is possible. But the real change happened later because I wasn't able to implement what I learned from the secret. And later on, I also learned that in the secret, there was a lot of stuff missing that actually made it really hard to work for people. So it was almost like if it worked for some people, it was luck. And luck in case, like it's almost like you get a recipe, but some things are missing in the recipe, right? And then maybe by, you know, accident, you are adding some, some of the right ingredients and then it works. And actually for me, it worked in the beginning, but it's very fast it stopped working because I didn't fully understand what makes the law of attraction really work. So I went on a journey to really explore it and get better and change, change my life for the positive, right? So I tried to find my place in the world. I was working different part-time jobs, Burger King, everything. This was a friend of my school and I was doing actually okay. I mean, I was doing better because I found the secret, right? But I still didn't really have any success or anything that I was wishing for in my life or dreaming about, right? So I had a lot of dreams, but still nothing really happened. Still struggled a lot, especially with finances, money, and I wanted to be free and do what I love, but I had no idea what there was. And then it all started with my first mentor in 2017. This is my mentor, Mahima. That's when my life really started to change. She's also talking about, she talked about the law of attraction as well in her own way, in her own words, but in a very practical way. So it really helped me to start implementing these things. And it was, it was an amazing time. I was there till 2020, so roughly like three years, but I knew her since like five years. And I started working for her and we started traveling the world. So it was kind of my first manifestation because I wanted change. I knew you know, there must be more to life, right? Then I started my first business, which I failed, which was photography. So starting to dream, starting to take action, feeling better, but still not much success yet, right? So still trying to fight, find my place in the world. Then I had a deep dive into art and spirituality. So there was, so I was already working with Mahima. And since I had a very tough beginning, there was a lot of, a lot of traumas and a lot of, let's say shit <laughs> that came up that I needed to deal with. So it was a, that's why I say it was a hard, and long journey because there was before I could even manifest money or you know like my dream partner all these things I first needed to clean up all the mess that was inside of me right and then I started painting that's after I failed my photography business went back to my mom and with my photography business I went into debt was sleeping on the floor in an empty apartment it was very tough went back to my mom changed my life started painting so changing my life I mean I meant I started getting a job, right, just to pay my bills and on the side started painting. And it also was kind of a deep dive into getting to know myself. And then I had my first painting that got sold. That was about in 2019 probably. No, no, that was 2007. Yeah, 2017 or 2018. Anyways, my first painting ever sold, that was my first experience of like, wow, you know, that's what I always wanted. I, I always wanted to do something that I love and make money from it. I wanted freedom. I wanted to be happy, I wanted to travel the world, I wanted to have financial abundance, all these things. And yeah, I wanted to do something that I love, not just you know getting money through a job that I don't like. It never worked for me. So when I sold my first painting, I was, mind, I was blown away. And you can guess how much, how much it was, like how much I sold it for. Take a moment. Okay, it was 600 Swiss francs, which, which yeah, is about 700 USD. And that was my first success ever. It was, it was amazing because 
I saw that like I saw that I can do more, right? And that's something many people said it's not really possible. Nobody's buying you are. And that's when I started feeling better. And there's also like one secret to the law of attraction, which is feeling, right? You you have to feel good in order to attract good things. And I've been feeling bad for a long, 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 long time. And it took really it took me a while to start feeling better. But when I started feeling better, I sold this piece for 600, which is amazing. And I was really, really grateful for that. And then in 2019, I made 15,000 within six months from my art. That was my first experience ever, experiencing some getting financial abundance. And, and it's not much at all, but again, I came from a very, very, very poor background. And I had so many negative beliefs around money. It's crazy because my mom never worked in her whole life. She's getting supported still today from the government and with like just the minimum amount of money. So I grew up with a very, very poor money mindset, right? And so making 15,000 from my art was mind blowing because this is something I loved and I started seeing a way. Then in 2020, I actually quit my job and went all in. So within one and a half months, I made like 24K from my art, which was literally mind blowing. And after that, I was in a momentum, making more money, selling more art. And it, it was just, it was an amazing journey. And the coolest thing happened the same year, 2020 in November, which is I had a 30,000 month and sold a single painting for 24K USD. And th this is this painting, it's an abundance painting. So it's also very interesting that it, this year I started actually painting abundance paintings and abundance came to me. It's crazy because I, I, I already knew the law of attraction and in 2020 was actually the, the time when the law of attraction really, really, really started working for me. I was already into it since a long time, but 2020, it really started working for me. I also saw myself like I visualized every morning. I, I had a meditation and I saw money like raining down and it felt so good. I felt like I had goosebumps. And if you know already about the law of attraction, you know, that's the perfect space to be in. Right. So I had this knowingness that money will come and it literally did. Like I was selling one after the next, had a really, really great time. And yeah, what did, what happened after that? Let's check. After that, I made around 200,000. I sold around 200,000 worth of my art. I had some, some years where it slowed down a little bit, where I almost felt like I served my purpose with my art. You know, in the beginning it was so much, I had so much passion. And then at one point I'm like, hmm, maybe I want to do something else, but no, no, the, no, nonetheless. But still I had like lots of success. I was in different newspapers. I had like millions of views on Instagram. I made a big sculpture and sold a lot of art. And it was just like, it was amazing. And that again, it's the first time in my life I ever had money. It was like living in a dream, especially like selling this painting for 24K when the money started coming in. So she, she made like a split payment because of the bank didn't want to give her all this money. But like, yeah, she made a down payment for 5,000. And then I'm like, what is happening? My life is a dream. I, I was living the dream. It was incredible. It was like, it was beautiful. I never had never ever before that money, never. And yeah, it was, it was, it was amazing. It showed me what's possible. And at that time I also had like, at that time artists started to reach out to me and asking me like how I do it. And then I also already started to feel like maybe I need to go into the direction of coaching because when I was 20 or 19, no, I think 20, I had my first mentor. I had actually a mentor before that, but he was more like a fitness coach and uh, he was also a mindset coach, but it was more for me f about the, the fitness. But yeah, with Mohima, my first real coach, I already knew on one point, I want to give this knowledge to other people because this knowledge changed my life. I was, I was, I, I, I don't know where I would be today without having had this support from the mentors and all this knowledge about the secret and so on and so forth. I would, I don't know what, what I, what I would have done because I was in a very, very, very bad state when I was very young. And then I had like lots of happy collectors, of course, maybe some of you know, John Botcher, John and Missy. Uh, from Lifebook, also a program that I did that changed my life. And uh, they bought one of my paintings. And in the email, he also sent me an email where he said, a, my painting is next to an original Damien Hirst painting and the sculpture that was owed, uh, owned by David Bowie, which he bought. 
and which was also like a dream coming true, really. I mean, and I got paid. This is not not something that I gave as a gift. I got paid the full price for what I'm doing, and lots of other customers that are really really happy. And I charge a lot for my for my art, right? This is also like you need to have the mindset to actually be able to charge a lot that much. It has a lot to do with self-worth, what you feel like you deserve, with your money mindset, yeah, your money beliefs, all these things, right? Because if you feel like you don't deserve a lot of money or you have negative beliefs around money, you won't be able to charge that much. But I charged a lot, 6,000, 7,000, 9,000, 10,000, 24,000, like all these prices, I sold several, several of these pieces, a lot of them, right? And people loved it, they were grateful. I was just like manifesting my dream as an artist and then I kind of also escaped the rat race and started traveling the world but at that time I was free I, I didn't have a nine to five anymore I could do whatever the whatever I want sorry I wanted to curse <laughs> and so I was traveling a lot you see like right now I'm in Bulgaria so you see Bulgaria on the beach you see Sofia you see Italy America Portugal uh, what else is here Switzerland, so I also traveled a little bit within Switzerland to amazing places, Spain, Malaga, Marbella, all these amazing places. And there were like way more places that I went to, especially back then with Mahima, but I didn't have more spa space and I, I think you get the point, right? So I was just like traveling the world, living my dream and, and just finally having this sense of freedom that I always wanted because I could never see myself being employed. I was employed, but I just realized I'm, I'm not... I'm not made for this. I have to do my own thing. I want to have freedom. This is a must for me. And I, I did it. I'm traveling the world still today. Right now I'm very focused on creating this course. So I'm like more stable right now. But soon I'm going to travel even more because it's, it's one of the things that gives me joy. And I think it's also very, very good for actually, you know, using the law of attraction in your advantage because it's very good to see new things. It gives you new inspiration, new thoughts and so on and so forth. Then I also became a model that happened this year. And it's also like, by the way, I had people telling me since I was a kid that I look very good. I never believed that I did. Never, never till this year. Can you imagine that? And the moment I, be and I actually wanted to become a model, but I didn't fully believe that I would be worth it, that I'm really like, that I could be a model. And so it never happened. And I actually applied to model agencies, several ones, never worked. This year, I started, I, I shifted my mindset and the first time in my life I started to feel and believe that I'm really, really beautiful. I applied, immediately got accepted and I actually applied to this agency last year, they didn't accept me. This again, is, it's, it's a proof that it all starts with your mind because also the world, your life is a reflection of what you believe is true and I believed I'm not good enough, I'm not, I don't look good enough. And when I started changing that and when I seriously started be to believe that I look really, really good and I can be a model, I applied, they accepted me. And funny wise, then I had the proof. First, I needed to believe it in order to act like manifest it in, the, in, in my reality. But then this also gave me even more confirmation that I am really good looking. What happened after that is like literally wherever I went, people gave me compliments. It was crazy. I got some food and they tell my girlfriend that I'm really, really beautiful. And maybe that already happened before. You know, maybe people already complimented me before, but I couldn't see it. I couldn't, I couldn't even acknowledge it. I was like, because it wasn't in my radar screen, you know? So we will talk more about that, but that was a big manifestation for me too. And I don't, po personally, like, I don't think, I don't see myself now as like a huge model. But it always was a dream and I manifested it and now I have fun with it and we'll see where it leads me to. Then I also created my dream physique. So here you see the before and after. That's also a thing that I manifested because I went to the gym before, but I didn't have the right mindset. So it didn't work. When I started shifting my mindset around how I look, and by the way, with the law of attraction, a big thing is like loving what you do. And I know there are a lot of people that say, you know, you should do what you hate and that. Yes, it's a different concept. I'm not 100% sure where I stand to that. But sometimes, of course, you have to do things that you don't like, you know, because you know it's good for you. But I started to, to really enjoy the, the, the gym. I found a way to enjoy the gym. 
And then it took no real discipline anymore to go to the gym. And I started seeing progress and I started feeling exciting. I already saw the physique in my mind and I believed it's possible. And that's when the real change happened. And of course there is action included. You cannot build your dream physique just by sitting on the couch. That's another misunderstanding of the law of attraction. Nobody said that this is the case. But some people, that's what they understand. They think like it's only the thoughts. It's not. The thought is the beginning, all starts with the thought, but l l let's give an example. Like what comes first? Is it first the action to pick up your phone and call your brother, or is it first the thought that you could call your brother? Of course, it's always the, f the thought, right? First you have the thought to call your brother, then the action comes, which is like you actually take the phone, dial in the number, or choose the number or the name, and call, right? So this is the point of the law of attraction. It always starts with the thought. And if you're in the right space, in the right energy, action is effortless. And we will talk about this more. Then also attract my dream partner. This is very recently, but she's literally everything that I was wishing for. I actually made a video talking about what I want. And then, and also by the way, I actually knew her before, not really well, but we chatted and it never came to a meeting and it triggered me in a negative way and that showed me that I wasn't ready like emotionally energetically I wasn't ready for that the moment that when I changed that when I shifted when I felt worthy worthy of love and getting what I want in a relationship and believing that I deserve someone like this bam I wrote her again we came to a meeting and bam the, the, re the rest is history we, bo we both kind of fell in love and yeah and that's also one of the things, it's, it's again, all starts with the mind. If you feel that you're worth something like an amazing partner that has the things that you want, because I had quite high expectations, at least like the things that were important for me, and I set them all in a video, like four months, I think, before we met. And then she literally was everything. It's, it's crazy, right? And the next thing is also, that's also... Coming back to the modeling, through changing my thoughts, I changed the way I look. So before you see how I looked, and then after, completely different energy and vibe. And you can imagine back then, I didn't receive many compliments. And of course, you could say, like, I always had this potential. Yes, I did, but also you, right? We all have a potential to make a lot of money, to, to realize, realize our dreams. But if we don't see it, if we don't believe it, it's almost it's as if it's not there, right? So... That's why it starts with the thought and the belief, right? Because back then I wasn't feeling that I'm beautiful, that I'm worth it, you know, that, yeah. So you saw how I treated myself, actually. <laughs> don't, don't really look healthy. I didn't look like, I just didn't make the best out of myself. But when I started really loving myself more, having more positive thoughts, feeling better in my skin, that's when my look started to change too. So if I did it, you can too. And there are more things that I did in my life, like more manifestations, you know, a lot of things happen, but these are kind of the main things, at least the main things that were important for me. Because these are some things that I wanted to manifest or things that, you know, limiting beliefs that I had, struggles that I had that completely changed through the power of thought. So now let's go into week one, creating your dream. This is the first module. This is week one. And that's basically where we create your dream. Because without knowing your, what exactly your dream is, you cannot really manifest it. So I would also say it's the foundation of everything. So welcome to week one. This is the video. We prepare you for the journey ahead in this video. Who do you listen to? This concept changed everything for me. It's very important. So we will discuss this in this video. The biggest secret, the most powerful law in the universe. Then cultivating a success mindset. Become a magnet for success. Create your vision. This is the foundation for this whole course. And that's the fun part as well, because that's where we literally create your vision, right? So there, there are a lot of action steps that you have to do to create your vision. And after that, you will be fired up. Become your own hero. So that's something that I felt was missing, especially like in Law of Attraction or The Secret. It's all about the future, what you want, what you want to manifest. But the thing is, if you always think about what you want and you have this feeling that you don't have it yet, it's not a good thing. You start attracting more of that, more wanting, 
more feeling that you don't have it, right? So I discovered something which I called achievement board, which we will discuss in this in this uh, week, exactly in the module one. And it's gonna be super, super exciting. And it will kind of balance out having the future vision, plus knowing already what you did and, and feeling like you are already your hero. And then also rewrite your story, creating the most powerful version of yourself. We're, we're gonna do that together. So the last three videos, the five, six, and seven, are a lot of action steps, things that we do together. So then let's talk about the program. So right now you're in Manifest Your Dreams free, probably, if you're watching that. And here you get access, so it's completely free, and you have the Manifest Your Dreams Accelerator Light. so it's a light version. It's kind of like the first module. And after that, you already have everything you need to manifest all your dreams. But some of you want more support, you wanna go deeper, you wanna hear more like how I did it and what I did specifically to get to these places. And even though I said like 99.9% .9 is the mindset, I will still teach you some strategies to actually start applying this stuff, right? But then you also have the five days manifest your dreams challenge. Make money doing what you love as well. So there are like three things that you get in this free community and it's always gonna be for free. For the ones that wanna upgrade to the premium group, it's gonna be a high level premium group. So it's gonna be like around 197 to 497 per month. Because I wanna you know, create a community of high level people and if you wanna manifest a lot of money, you also, there is a law that's called, I don't know if it's, it's a law, but there's a lot, of, a lot of conversations around like giving. You know, first give, giving away what you want. And when it comes to money, oftentimes you hold on to money and it actually is, it's from a space of scarcity, so we attract more scarcity. So if you're able to give 197 every single month, you're basically telling the universe that you have enough, right? And of course, you're going to get a lot in return because you get the man Manifest Your Dream Accelerator Premium, Passion to Profit, Money Magnet Manifesto, Abundance Alchemy, Dream Partner Manifesto, Dream Body Manifesto, and lots of other bonus trainings. These are just a few. There are gonna be way, way, way more. And I'm also gonna include some, you know, in the school community you can level up depending on how active you are and how much you also help others, right? So it's not just gonna be me, the teacher, it's also gonna be you guys that supports each other and you can level up the more active you are. And if you get to a certain level, you get like VIP coaching from me. Uh, there is all, there's also like a collaboration that, we're, that I wanna do with you guys. So. And that's just for the ones that want to do that, which is basically like doing a painting with me and then I sell it and we split the profit. That's gonna be like at level nine. So there are exciting you know, things that you can win and it's, it, school communities makes, makes the whole thing basically a lot of fun, which is very important in this process. So now let's go in the course curriculum. Or what you're getting in the course. Curriculum is a really difficult word for a German person, but let's dive right into it. So, we are going to discuss amazing things. And by the way, guys, this might change over time because, you know, that's the first time I'm making a course about the law of attraction. And I'm trying to, you know, put my, all my knowledge into a course, which is a challenge. But I've organized everything on a Trello board. So I'm pretty sure about what I'm teaching. And I think it's a great uh, structure of the course. But it might change and improve over time, right? But that's how it is right now. So first... This is module one, week one. We're going to create the dream. This is where it all starts. Get crystal clear on what you want to manifest because without clarity, you cannot manifest anything, right? So that's where we start. We, cr we create the dream, which is the foundation. And we are gonna get like super clear and we make it fun as well. Week two, the power of emotions. How and why your emotions are the key to having everything you want. We're gonna dive deep into this topic in week two, but I can already tell you right now, this is gonna change everything for you because you know maybe some people taught you how to set goals and get a lot of stuff done and you know the, the normal goal setting stuff, but nobody really talks about the power of emotions. And I will go really deep. Also, me as an artist, for me it never worked to just you know cut off my emotions and just go to work. I needed to align my my emotions with my vision and start like I needed to feel really really good and that's actually also how the law of attraction works right a thought is not that powerful in itself but a thought combined with strong emotions that's something that's going to manifest right thought and emotion together 
very powerful. These are the things that usually yeah, manifest in your life, right? And it's also like when we're afraid of something or worried about something for, for a long time, we are going to manifest that because we connect strong emotions to these thoughts, right? So we are going deep into that. And I also show you like how you can actually like change your emotions and start feeling better because we're gonna talk about manifesting money, manifesting your dream partner, better health, better physique and all these cool things. But in the end of the day, it's also about being happy. And there's actually a cool quote that is, I don't remember who that was, but the quote is like, you don't have to be, you don't have to be rich in order to be happy, but you have to be happy in order to be rich, right? And that's really something that I don't hear from so many people when they're talking about the law of attraction or when they just talk about, you know, achieving stuff, achieving goals. Not many people talk about that. But you have to be happy in order to achieve your vision. So we're going to have a deep dive into this topic. Then week three, defy the limits. Defy and conquer everything that's holding you back. On this journey, we are usually the ones that are in our way, right? You know that. We are the ones that are holding ourselves back. But we want to go deep and figure out what exactly is it that is holding you back. And everything around like limiting beliefs, like kind of bad habit, even addiction. I'm going, I'm going to talk about addiction because it's been a huge thing in my family. And this is like a never ending cycle of, you know, making yourself feel better short term, but long term feeling actually worse and worse and worse. And you have to, you have to start feeling really, really good. But long term, you have to do things where you maybe don't feel the effect right away, but long term, they're going to make you feel better, right? So we talk about all the limits, everything that's holding you back so that in the end you are like ready to go and crush it in your life, right? There are no, nothing is holding you back anymore. That's the goal. Then week four, that's when we create your new belief, belief system, right? We are basically creating a new personality and it's super important because you have to become that which you want. You cannot create a new life and you cannot attract your dreams and your new vision by being the old self. But that's also why I said defy the limits because it really, we need to look into that. We, are, we need to look really deep like what is holding you back? What limiting beliefs are in your way, right? Because I actually always loved painting, but there were so many limiting beliefs around what it means to be an artist. And I, I had actually a coach, John Butcher, and in one of his videos, I mean, coach, I joined his program, but I also talked to him personally, by the way, we sometimes write emails of his personal contact. But anyways, he said with pride, like he's very wealthy, very successful. So with pride, he said that he is an artist. And I had so many limiting beliefs about what that means. I was like starving artist and, you know, they're all over the place. They are like weird because we have a lot of pictures of artists where artists are kind of weird, right? Like, um, what's his name? Completely left my mind. But anyways, the, you know, the artist that bite, like, what did he do? Cut off his ear or something like this? Anyways, there are lots of these stories. So I had lots of limiting, limiting beliefs. But when he said that, I was like, something clicked. And suddenly I had a new belief system. I had the belief system that it's cool to be an artist and that you can be very successful and very wealthy because that's what he was. And that's when everything changed for me, literally. I tried so hard before. After that, it was clear. I'm gonna, you know, I am an artist. So I basically said, this is my personality. And then one thing led to the next. And I think two months or three months after that, I was living from my art. And I had like a 24,000 month, or like it was in one and a half months. But so a lot, like we have such a huge potential, but we have oftentimes these limiting beliefs, you know, the things that we are telling ourselves that we believe that are holding us back, right? So we are going to talk about that and then create your new personality. Week five is the law of action. Yeah, not the law of attraction, but the law of action, putting everything into practice and making it real. So I call it the law of action because this is also a misunderstanding about the law of attraction, which is some people think you just need to sit on, on your couch and visualize. But that's like nothing could be further from the truth. 
And that's why I'm specifically in week five, talk about the law of action, where we really put everything into practice and we make it real. And also like, and you did all the work before, like all the other four weeks, you got your mind in the right place. Your mind, your emotions, you defied your limits, you have a new belief system, you're like a new person. And then we go and get to work with all of this, found, you know, this, this huge foundation that you've built. You know, taking action with that is incredi incredibly powerful. And I learned this from so many people. I mean, so I had, a I had a few mentors in my life. And Mahima once said as well, like, you know, you can take massive action, but if your mind is not in the right place, these actions, it's almost like you're planting seeds, but these seeds are not, they're not really uh, flourishing. You know what I mean? They're, they're not really giving you the results that you want. But when you're in the right mind space and you feel amazing, you have full clarity around your belief, uh, your, your vision, you have empowering beliefs that support you. It's almost like everything is, it's crazy. Everything is so, it's kind of, I, I, I don't want to say easy, but yeah, it's kind of effortless. And you, you pick up stuff that you wouldn't have picked up before. You see new opportunities. And it's like, like just, it's almost like you're, you're working with the universe. You become aware that the universe is here to support you. And the universe is kind of like giving you opportunities and ideas. And you're like, what is happening? That's how it was for me many, many times. And it's an amazing feeling. And when you take action from that place, it's just like everything is aligning. It's, it's amazing. So, yeah. Oft, so that's why also uh, week five, that's why we, you know, take massive action in week five. And you're already going to, to take action before, but it will be more about preparing the soil. Then week six is practical tools. And that's also to, like, I want to give you all the tools that you need. Basically also summarize it again, again, because I will give you some tools in all of these weeks. But these practical, practical tools are the ones that you need to use on an ongoing basis to actually not just speed up your results, but keep having these results and keep being on the right journey and keep, you know, flowing in the right direction. And so that's where we're going to dive deep into the tools and, you know, what it means and how you use them and so on and so forth. It's going to be very important, right? And then week seven is the journey ahead. This is just the beginning, how to continue to see lasting changes and results. This will be important because what happens to many people, especially when it's around, you know, law of attraction, setting goals, achieving success, you know, these, these mindset, mindset trainings, it's they do something like this and then after they are done, they completely drop off. And that's what I want to avoid by week seven, right? So we can really create lasting change. That's going to be important. Then mindset for success. So how do you get the most out of this course? It's going to be very simple but important, so listen up. So first, completion. Most people fail because they don't even finish what they started and keep changing their mind. That's very true. Most people start something and they don't finish it. And why they don't finish it? Different reasons, they get distracted or also they change their mind. Suddenly they're not interested in, in that anymore. There's something called the shiny object sy syndrome and it's huge in our information time right because it's like there are so many cool things around and we all have social media we all scroll on social media so we start one thing and then we see another course and by the way also like the algorithms are built up like this right they know that you're doing a course for manifestation success achieving your dreams and then you will see other stuff like this and you're like hmm, maybe this is better but I'll tell you just complete what you started really because it's a habit it's a habit to jump from one thing to the next and it's not a good habit because you might, you know, maybe let's say you jump to five th different courses. Maybe three of them are not so good, but you still learn something and two of them would have changed your life if you would have completed it, right? So very important, complete what you start. Complete this course, don't change your mind, keep being on it. Because in the beginning you will be excited and after that, this, you know, this excitement wears off a little bit and that's where you need to use discipline and just remember you want to complete this course. When you're done, then you can go somewhere else if you want to. Stay open. You don't know what you don't know. There's also something, sometimes we feel like, oh, I already know that. I already know that. Or like, yeah, I heard this already from this person. I saw this on YouTube, blah, blah, blah. And we kind of, or, or we don't believe something or we don't want to believe something. Just stay open because you don't know what you don't know. There is a reason that you're here, right? And if you don't have what you want, it means that you're not doing something right and it's okay 
But that's why stay open, right? Just stay here, stay open, and always remember you don't know what you don't know. Ask questions. Ask questions whenever you have them and be active in the group. Really important, right? Because that's how you grow, that's how you connect to other people, and that's how we can help. Implementation. If you want things to change in your life, if you want things in your life to change, you have to change things in your life. Exactly. Very true statement. And I love it because it's so, like, so logical in a way, but sometimes we forget that. And the main thing that you have to change to change your life is your thoughts and how you feel. And then you will start taking different actions. And we will talk about how that exactly works. Ask for support. If something isn't working for you, seek out support before you quit. Yeah, don't quit, right? Because that all, again, like some of us, we just quit too early. It's like maybe we don't agree with something or we don't understand something or something isn't working for us. Don't quit. First, ask for support. I'm here to support you and there are other people as well. So definitely do that. Long-term gain. This course doesn't give you quick, quick fixes. It takes work and implementation to see change, right? Keep that in mind. There's nothing in the world that gives you quick fixes. In marketing, you always see that because they always tell, yeah, it's so easy. You know, like this person in one month made 50,000 and I make in six months 300,000, whatever. But, you know, these people worked on that, on, on that, right? And sometimes, and this was with me the case, I worked like years on my mindset before I even said, uh, before I even saw any success in my life, like any, any success that actually manifested in terms of money, dream partner, all these things. I needed to work on my mindset first because I also came from a very difficult background, so I had a lot to, to work on, right? So, see this as a long-term game, okay? And repetition. If you really want to master this material, you have to do it again and again and again. It was very important, right? Um, there was a saying, repetition is the mother of success, something like this, <laughs> or the daughter of success, I'm not sure. But the point is, like, you, you don't go through this course once or hear this information once and you suddenly got it and your life changes. You have to repeat these things, right? Repetition is the key. That's how you get good at something and, and start to really, really understand it because you will learn a lot of stuff here. You can, it's impossible for you to take it all in and, you know, start implementing everything. So how to get help and support? First, community, right? Post your questions in the community. My goal is to build a big, big, amazing community with amazing people that all want to manifest their dreams, whatever that is, you know, maybe a new house, dream partner, dream physique, more money. Some of you maybe also want to make money with your art. Maybe we have also some, some other artists in here like dancers, musicians, actors, whatever you want to do, this community is here to support you. Q&A sessions, ask questions in the Q&A sessions. If you're in the free community, it's very likely that you don't have access to, to Q&A sessions. Maybe there will be a point where I do it, I don't know yet, but it's very likely that you don't have access to the Q&A sessions. But in the premium one, premium one there will be definitely um, Q&A sessions where you can ask questions. Personal message. If you still need help, send me a personal message. Okay? Because I'm really here to help. Like, I don't want you to quit and go out. If you really need, like if something is not working or, or you really need help, just message me. I'm here to help, especially when the community is still small. Right? Because the, like at one point when the community is really, really big, I cannot really give this personal support anymore. Like with messages, for example, I still will be available on uh, Q&A sessions. But right now you still can use it. Right? Don't overuse it because it's not, kind of not included in the group. But I want to help. Right? So I just need to you know, use my time wisely. But if I can help, I want to help. And so if you have any questions or anything like that, you need support from me, just reach out. So summary. <clears throat> You are powerful. There's so much more potential in you than you can imagine. And it all starts with your thoughts. And it's very, very true. I think we all know that there's so much potential. But how do we unleash the potential? It really starts with your thinking. You have to change the way you think and change the way you feel. Right? Your thoughts influence your feelings and your feelings influence your thoughts. So it's really important that we get you in a really great state so that you can start to see and you know, feel and experience your, your, your power that you have, right? So it doesn't matter where you're at currently in your life. You are powerful. Just depends like how much negativity has built up. But of course, if you have a bigger bowl of negativity, it's, it will take a little bit more time to start diminishing that and start building up the positive bowl of energy, right? But that's why we're here to do that. 
Then the law of attraction. It's always working in the foundation of everything, right? So law of attraction is not everything. Like it's not, let's say, all that we're going to talk about, but it's a foundation because it's working. It just always works. It's a law, right? And it's one of the most powerful laws in the universe. There's also the law of lift. You know that? So it's like we have gravity, which is also a law. It's absolute, right? Everybody falls down a building if we, you know, jump off a building. We all fall. But then there are suddenly like birds and planes that can fly because of the law of lift. So the law of lift is all is ex like it's more powerful than gravity, right? It it, it, it overrides gravity. So it's a more power, powerful law than gravity. But the law of attraction is more is the is the most powerful law in the universe. It like your thoughts, like you you transfer with your thoughts and things you transfer energy and it goes goes. It can go, somebody else can pick it up no matter where they are, immediately, right now, bam. And that's also like, today I just had this experience. I was thinking like a guy wants to work with me. Um, I mean, I should say I want to work with him. He, ha he would help me to build up my YouTube channel. And I was thinking about him today. Almost wrote him, but for, what, for a reason I didn't. I, I got distracted or something. And we didn't hear from each other maybe for a month. And a few hours later he wrote me. How is that possible? We all know experiences like this. It's because your thoughts transfer immediately to the other person. So that's why like you're thinking about the person and they call you, right? And it's not just like, this, just a small example. But let's say you have, you have a dream and you're looking for a new house. If you're like focusing on that dream, on this vision and with positivity, like you, you focus on it, that's energy that you're putting out. And then on one point, suddenly you meet someone that ha has a house to rent and it's exactly the house you want. You love everything about it. Same with the dream partner. You really, like you're looking for your dream partner, the, you know, the person that you described, then you focus on it, you believe you can get it and suddenly you meet this person from somewhere, right? Because it's like attracts like. That's what the law of attraction is. It's like you attract what you put out, right? So that's, it's always working. It's very powerful. And that's why this is the, also like the foundation of this course and everything in your life. Trust the process, follow the process and keep getting better at it, right? It's like very important for you like to trust because if you don't trust the process, you're not going to implement the things and you're not going to give you all, right? And also remember, nobody's perfect when they start. Like I created my vision when I was 18, but back then I didn't even know exactly what I wanted. I just put everything on my vision board and I actually put a lot of like, like cars and private chats and all these things on my vision board and I started feeling really, really bad. And back then I didn't understand why. It made no sense to me that I feel bad because like everybody told me like I should do that. Like my mentors told me to have a vision board and put all the amazing things on there. Later on I learned some things which I want to actually talk about later but let's, I can already say it now because repetition is the key. So I will repeat myself because it's important, right? Repetition is key. So uh, later on, I realized that sometimes if your goals are too big or your vision is too big, you can actually focus on the absence of it, right? So you see the cars and all the, like these amazing, let's say $10 million houses, and there is no way you believe you can get that. You have no idea how, and it seems so far. But people told you to do that, and then you look at this vision board and you start, feeling, start to feel really bad. Usually it's like you, you got some motivation from somewhere, you watch the video and then you pumped up and then you do that. But later on, you, you look at it and you start feeling bad. It's because you focus, it, it's too big. You start focusing on the absence of it. You don't believe you can actually get it, right? So these are some things that we're also going to talk about because there are a lot of misconceptions when it comes to creating your vision and goal setting and stuff like that. <coughs> Ask for support, yeah. You aren't going to be perfect in the beginning and everyone st starts at a different place right? Very important. So don't compare yourself to others. You're where you're at. And if you need help, ask for support. And leave a testimonials and win special prizes. Now we end with a quote. One of my favorite quotes. I actually tattooed, oh, this is the quote, same quote here. Whatever the mind of man can conceive and bring itself to believe, it can achieve. Napoleon Hill. So whatever your goal is, your dream, your vision that you want to manifest, Whatever wishes you have, just remember, it's possible. Like whatever you can see in your mind and believe that you can achieve it, you can have it. It's 100% possible. And we are going to work on that. On your belief, on you being able to actually see your vision and to actually also achieve it, to manifest it and to bring it into reality. 
And now let's get to work. Talk soon. Hey everyone, welcome to video two in week one. Who do you listen to? This video is going to be exciting, probably not that long, but we have to cover it because these are the basics. So super important to, to know that stuff. After this, you will be aware of these mistakes. You know this concept really, really well and you will get faster results because of it. So let's dive right into it. This is what we are going to cover. First, listen to those who have what you want. Then avoid negative influences. Learn from the best. Trust your inner circle, this community. Listening to your own intuition. And always make sure to follow me on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook for exclusive content. Um, I will still make this exclusive content, but still it's good to follow me there. So once it's up, once I'm starting to really post con content on a consistent basis, you see it and you get a lot of knowledge. And also share this course, right? Because I want to make, like, I want to change people's life and we should do that together, right? So share the course with your friends. Also warning, this is the most important video in the entire course. Watch the entire video, don't, don't skip, don't fast forward. And I always say that because it's true, like one thing builds on the other thing, you know? Like you have to watch all the videos in order for the next video to make sense. Pro tip, watch the video in double speed. Uh, yeah, let's double speed, that's allowed because, you know, if you still can listen to it. If not, make 1.5, you know, if, you're, if it's too long, but yeah, it's allowed. And then let's dive right into it. Listen to those who have what you want. What does this mean exactly? So, first, identify successful role models. Make a list of people who have what you want. First of all, like, why should you listen to people that have what you want? Obviously, it's because these people really, really, really know what they're talking about. Because there are some people that teach stuff and they haven't even done it themselves, right? They are still struggling or, you know, they teach people to make money with trading, but never traded in their whole life. Just as an example. Or somebody teaching you how to have the most beautiful relationship in the world and they don't even have a partner. This would be an example of who you shouldn't listen to, right? So now the first step is identify successful role models, make a list of the people that have what you want. And it can be, that's kind of, it could be me if you want to, but it doesn't have to. It can be anyone that you admire, anyone that you look up to, and just make a list with these people because these are the people that you want to listen to, okay? Ideally, you have these people to talk to, right? Because just watching videos, that's another topic, but you know, sometimes when you watch a video, it's not really based on your situation, right? That's why I don't think the best way to learn is to go on YouTube and Instagram, watching all these reels, because in the end of the day, they made these videos for, you know, for their ideal customer, but you might be in a different situation and maybe not be what you need, right? But anyways, let's go further. Study their methods, look at Interviews, books, and online resources, don't, don't try to reinvent the wheel. Success leaves clues. Also very important, you know, there are ways, like people, th th there is a reason they are successful, right? So you just need to study how they did it. But <clears throat> I would say this is with caution. Take this with caution. I think you say caution, right? Because you can completely overdo that, right? But if you have your list with your role models, <clears throat> you should also study them, right? You should be aware that you should make a conscious decision of who you want to listen to, right? So you do not just consume content from anyone. And I'd say like, make a list with three, four people maximum. And these are the people that you're listening to. Otherwise you, go, you get completely overwhelmed. And then look, in, look at interviews, read their books, look for online resources, but also don't get distracted, right? Right now you're in this course, I just want to give you this mindset for the future. Because whenever, like, whenever you leave this group, keep that in mind. Right? Success leaves clue, clues and you want to listen to those who have what you want. Copy their success. Apply the principles and strategies that work for them in your own life. Ad adapt their methods that fit to fit your unique style and circumstances. But keep the core principle intact. Basically what I'm saying is follow this course. Right? There are certain things that I've done to get to where I'm at. And the cool thing with Law of Attraction is you can apply it to any situation. Right? Because the core principle is the same for everyone. And if you use these strategies, you can sh start changing anything in your life. Whatever situation you want to improve or manifest something, you can implement it in whatever area. That's the cool thing about law of attraction. 
Then avoid negative, negative influences, super important, right? Recognize negative voices, identify the people and sources that consistently bring negativity in your life. And that could be people, because people love to give advice. But it could also be videos, movies, newspapers, and all this nice stuff. But yeah, I want you to get aware of that, right? Start getting aware of the people that plan negativity in your brain. And as I said, it could be friends, it could be family, it could be even your partner, right? It could be anyone in your you know, environment, right? But also it could be the movies you watch and the videos you watch on social media. That's a big, a big thing today, right? We watch all these you know, short video clips, these reels. Some of them are good, but we go through too, too, way too many videos. And we start adapt, adapting their worldview. There, there are people with very extreme v views, right? And some people, they, they're like a lot of them actually, especially on so social media, because you have to be convinced about what you say in order to you know, get in front of people. So these people are very convinced about what they say. And I don't want to mention any names, but when you watch these videos and, and it sounds so good, you just take it in. You don't even question, who is this person? Do I really want to be like this person? Does this person have what I, what, what I want to have? You don't even question, you just go through Instagram, you watch all these videos and you just take it in. So it's kind of like, it's, yeah, it's kind of dangerous. You have, to be, you have to be careful what you let into your brain, right? It's like almost like, you know, the food you give your body will shape how you look like and how you feel physically. The same with your mind, the food, the information you give your brain will shape the way you think and also shape the way you feel, right? So it's extremely important to cut out negative things and you don't need to cut out everything all at once, you know, some leisure time and watching a movie is okay, but become aware, right? The more negativity you have every day, the harder it is for you to change and start attracting positive things in your life, right? To recognize these negative voices and start committing to cutting these things out. Also, if it's a family member, maybe you don't have to talk to this person every day, maybe once a week or maybe once all, tw all two weeks, for example, right? But it's important. Because in the end of the day, you become what you consume. Then limit exposure to negativity. Reduce your interactions. Focus on people who uplift and support you. That's already what I said. So reduce the negative interactions that you have in your life. And focus on people that uplift and support you. And luckily we have this community. But these are, like, we have people here that all want the same. We all want to manifest amazing things in our life, right? We want to achieve more success, have a more beautiful relationship, or maybe we want to have a relationship, or be better physique, better health, like attract more money, all these amazing things, right? And we are all ready to work on ourselves and changing our mind. And a lot of the people that you meet out there might not be at that place, right? They complain about their life. They don't really have, they don't even want to find a solution. They just want to complain and, you know, be negative. And it's also understandable, they feel negative, so that's also what they put out. And, you know, maybe you also find yourself on one point in this situation, but then it's, of course, important that you have awareness, that you want to change that, that you take responsibility. And that's why you're here, right? So no matter where you're at, you can change it. But it starts really with, like, being mindful about what you let into your brain. Because that's, that, that's then how you see the world, right? If you just have too much negativity, you see things negative. And you don't even see opportunities that are happening. You don't see the good things. And you have, you have to focus on the good things. You have to focus on what's going well, the amazing thing, things that are happening, the, the, the success you are, you are achieving in order to attract more of it, right? Because you get what you focus on. So start reducing that. And surround yourself with people that really support you, uplift you, and positive people. Reframe negative feedback. That's a, that's a good one. When you encounter criticism, learn to recognize the difference between constructive feedback and pure negativity. So sometimes we get feedback, right? And let me tell you, most people, they cannot communicate. So, so still like sometimes a struggle for me, right? We, we, it's hard to communicate. So sometimes when somebody gives you actually good feedback, it seems like it's negative uh, criticism, you know, like they're just negative about you. And so you need to differentiate between, hey, this is actually great feedback you know, where you can use it to change and do something better, which th that takes practice. It takes a high level of self-awareness to be able to take criticism and, you know, like, ch like 
um, how do you transform it in, into something positive? Because mostly we, are, we, we, we get triggered, right? We get triggered. They, people maybe point out blind spots and we get triggered and we get angry. But it's a good, it's actually feedback, right? And it also has to do with a lot of self-love. If you're tough on yourself and if you are like, you know, being very mean to yourself in your mind, if somebody gives you criticism, you can almost not take it. So it also has to do with loving yourself and being kind to yourself. Because if you do that, criticism doesn't even feel bad. You can recognize it way faster. You know if it's just negativity and then you know it has nothing to do with you. Or you know this is, you know, constructive criticism that you can actually use to improve your life and it's also not it doesn't make you feel bad so if you if you trigger by f negative feedback or criticism sometimes also has to do it shows you something right either you're very negative to yourself you're very tough on yourself you you know punish yourself in your mind or there is just like negativity that comes up that's triggered right so this is something to be also aware of this is not going to change from today to tomorrow but it's a good thing to stop paying attention to then we go to growth mindset. That's gonna be super important because if you wanna be successful in this course and have lasting change, you have to have the growth mindset. What does this mean actually? It means, first of all, invest in education. Don't be shy to invest money in quality edu education and resources. I invested around like 30,000 in 2020, right? That's when I had like the most success with my art, and I wasn't shy to invest in my education, in business coaches, in personal growth coaches, personal growth events, all these cool things. And, and I always got it back, you know, it all, like there was always a return on investment, even if it was an emotional one or it was for my mindset. But things started to change when I actually invested in, my, in myself. That's when things changed the most. My first business coach, he helped me to sell my art. Without him, I would probably not even be have been able to sell that much art in 2020, right? And it was hard for me to actually invest because he, he charged a few thousands, you know, to, to be coached by him. But I trusted that this is the right thing. I trusted him. I invested in it. And I had a big, big, like, like I don't even know, like 30 times or 40 times return on this investment. So, yeah, definitely don't be shy of doing that. Then join mastermind groups. Find groups where you can regularly, like on a consistent basis, I cannot say this word, <laughs> where you can consistently meet with successful individuals who can offer guidance, advice, and support. And that's why you have basically this group. And later on, I also want to create a mastermind group for you guys. We, we can talk about that in the future, but basically where we have a group of like, so let, let's say four people ideally, not more, where you meet per week and you hold each other accountable. Right, that's gonna be that's what I'm doing, and it's it's powerful. It works really, really well. And this mastermind you kind of have in here already. We are building a mastermind together. Then continuous learning. Make it a habit to continue. Continuously learn and grow should be different here. Make it a habit, right? And I, I mean, if you're already here, you're probably already doing that, right? And it's never it never ends. That's also the thing. It, your learning never ends. There is never a point in your life where you, where you stop learning. John Watcher, for example, one of my biggest role models, with 60, he's still like learning continuously. He's always listening to audiobooks, he's always doing courses, he's having his mastermind group. So, you know, and, and he's already super successful, right? He would not even need to do that, but it never stops. There's always more to learn. So it's kind of cultivating this habit of always learning always doing a course, always reading a book. And by the way, also give a, I will give a book list here as well, like the one of the best books when it comes to law of attraction and feeling better and your mindset and all these things, then I will give a book list and then you can read these books and uh, it's powerful, right? Because if you make it just a habit to read every day, 20 minutes, for some of you it might be a bit much, but you also could make it a habit to watch this course every day or 20 minutes a day. But reading, the thing with reading, it's a bit different. It has a different effect, really. We watch so, so many videos. You should be ideally doing both. You know, having a course, but also read books. And that's why I will recommend like a certain book list so that you can do both. Maybe you can start with the habit of like reading two pages a day. And you just start with that. But it's going to be powerful because it shows your brain. It shows you, it shows you that you can make a change. And it, it feeds your brain with new information, with new ideas. That's how you keep, that's actually how you feel the best. That's also how you get new ideas, new inspiration. You feed your brain with positive things and you continuously learn new things. 
I need to take that back, by the way, before we go trust into trust your intuition. You don't always need to learn just new things. You just need to always learn things. And repetition is super important. So I'm not a fan of like reading, you know, 20 different books. I think it's better to read a few big, uh, a few books that were amazing, where you felt the difference, that, ha that made a big impact in your life and read them over again and again, right? I think that's a better strategy because it's impossible to read a book once and, you know, have everything, um, how should I say, being able to comprehend everything and implement everything, right? So now trust your intuition. That's also very important because, you know, with all of this, listen to other people, have mentors, have your role models. At the, in the same time, you, you are very a unique being. And I really believe that the universe is talking to us through our in, intuition. Also like, you know, inspiration. Inspiration is also for me something that is like the universe talking to us through our thoughts, right? So it's important that you still listen to your intuition because you are a unique being on a very individual journey. So even if you have role models and you follow their footsteps and, and you should actually, you really should, you should listen to the people that have what you want. And the closer you get to a person like that, for example, if you want to have a partner and you find a person that has the most beautiful relationship, exactly the one you want, then learn, try to learn from this person, right? Yeah. But then, yeah, let's talk about your intuition. Develop self-awareness. Spend time understanding your own strength, weaknesses, passions, and values. This, this self-awareness will enhance your intuition. Yeah, it's kind of getting to know yourself, right? What is important for you in your life? What are you good at? Why, what are you not so good at? All these cool things. And then how you do that is basically through meditation and a reflection, right? Spending time with yourself. So engage in regular meditation and reflection practices, practices to quiet your mind and connect with your inner guidance. So this is something you have to practice because the more you meditate, the more you reflect on your life, the more you give yourself also space to just be, the more you will hear your intuition. Because your intuition is always here, always guiding you. But sometimes, especially when we have a lot to do, right? When there are things going on, um, maybe a lot of stress, a lot of work. These are usually the times when we don't hear our intuition anymore. And oftentimes also, these are the times where we get ourselves into trouble. You know, when we are so stressed and so much to do and so much on our plate that we cannot even make time for reflection and meditation. So we don't even hear our intuition anymore. And it's powerful. If you can meditate and you reflect, you sometimes really get guidance of what to do next. You get inspiration. And that's what I've done a lot. And it always guided me towards amazing results. For example, like once I, um, I needed to make some money, right? Being self-employed, you always have to find new customers, even always making money. That month, I think it didn't go so well, so I needed to find a way to make money. But instead of working more, I actually went for a long walk. I actually did it every single morning. But you should also do habits, like you should build these things in as habits, right? Went for a long walk, listened to one of my favorite teachers. He always made me feel good every time I listened to him. And at one point, while I'm on the walk listening to him, I had this inspiration and I was thinking about, I mean, I wasn't even thinking, it literally came to me. And the, the thought or the idea was that I should burn my paintings. Not all of them, of course. I kept a lot of them, like my favorites. But there were some paintings that, are, that were kind of damaged. So we've, we had like a water da damage in the garage and lots of them kind of, you know, got wet and I couldn't sell them anymore and it bothered me. And then I also needed to make money. So yeah, went for the walk and I was relaxed. And then I had this idea that I should burn them and I should post it on Facebook. I did it, I posted it on Facebook, very short post that I'm burning a lot of my paintings. Now it's a good time to have a painting uh, if you ever wanted one. And I made, I think 12 or 13,000 within three days from that post. So that's the power of like, you know, being, giving, like being in a receptive mode, basically, right? It's powerful. You cannot always be in a, if you're always in an action mode, especially if, it, if, if things are not going the way you want, then you, you cannot receive something different. You're going, going to create more of what you already have. So sometimes it's important to slow down, take a step back, meditate and reflect, go for a walk and give yourself some space. Oftentimes then we get new ideas of new things to do. And sometimes it also takes time, right? 
if you build up a lot of like negative momentum, it might take a few walks, like a few meditations and a lot of reflection in order to get like a solution or a new idea. And mostly it's when you take away pressure, by the way, you cannot force, you cannot meditate or reflect with pressure and force. These things are here to kind of, you know, give yourself space and slow down and, you know, relax. So let's go to the next one. Act on your gut feelings. Exactly what I said, like, I had a, I, I needed to find a way to make money, right? So I was faced with making a decision. What should I do with my paintings? How should I make money? What should I do next? And I paid, I went for the walk and I paid attention to this gut feeling that I had that I should do. I think actually we get a lot of these um, inspirations, ideas, these, these gut feelings and our instinct is telling us to do something, but oftentimes we're too busy or too all over the place or too stressed to actually li listen to it. So we have to pay attention. And that's also why you need to become more quiet. So for me, intuition is everything about becoming more quiet. Yes, consume content that's good for you, but also make time where you're not consuming any content, where you're just with yourself, right? Because that's also how you process the content that you are consuming. And that's where, you are in, where your intuition is telling you what to do next. What, what's the right step for you right now? Especially if you're watching videos. This person doesn't talk to you directly. I mean, it feels sometimes like it, but they, you, you don't tell them your situation, right? So they don't, they don't know exactly where you're at and what you, what you need, but your intuition always knows it, always, right? So make sure to take time to slow down and reflect, meditate, self-awareness and always act on your gut feelings or as much as you can, right? It takes also practice. And then also, yeah, as I already said, practice, practice, practice. Your intuition is always working, but it might have become a bit quiet. Exactly. Especially, as I said, when lots of things going on, you probably don't hear it so much. So that's why it takes time to, or why, why you should take time to slow down and just, you know, sometimes give yourself some space. Take away the pressure. So, yeah, hope that helps. Now we are already at summary. Let's summarize the whole thing. There was a short video also with who you listen to. The, the concept is actually pretty straightforward. You should always listen to people that were where you at and are where you want to be, right? So the thing is like, if you listen to someone that won the lottery, this person probably cannot show you how to make money even though they have the money that you want or somebody grew up with a family that was rich, so they always got their, the money from the family. This person, can, it can seem like they, were, they are where you wanna be, but they haven't been where you are, right? So this is kind of, that's the main, the main thing you need to pay attention to, and that's the, the thing when you listen to your family, friends, because people love to give advice, right? Sometimes they give you advice unasked, and just always have this in the forefront of your mind. Like, who do I listen to? Do I really sh should, I, should I really listen to my mom? Does my mom have what I want? Yes or no? Or like my friend or this person or that person. But if someone has what you want, and that's why you should make a list of the people that have what you want, so that you know who you should listen to. Right? So, very important. So, summary is, first of all, choose who you listen to. Don't just take anyone's advice. Just as I said, it's really important to discern good information from bad information. Because sometimes, like when we listen to someone that doesn't have what we want. I mean, let's take it as an, as an example. Somebody is giving you an advice about your relationship. Let's say you're in a relationship. Then a person that doesn't have a relationship, never had, or like had a, re had a few relationships, but none of them worked. This person has the need to t tell you what you should do while you have a discussion or you have an argument with your partner. I, I would say don't listen to this person because this person f very likely couldn't handle the arguments well. Or otherwise, why isn't this person in a beautiful and healthy relationship? I would much rather listen to someone that has a relationship that I want. You know, that already 20 years together, if this is what you want, and they managed it perfectly or perfectly. There, nobody's perfect and nothing is perfect, but I mean, they did it well, you know, they went through the struggles, the arguments, and they grew together, and now they have an amazing relationship because they created that, right? That's a person I would like to listen to and ask for advice of how do I improve my relationship, you know, how, what I should do with these arguments and stuff like that, okay? Then, success leaves clues. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. That's very true. That's why you should always 
like always learn stuff, always be like have the growth mindset and listen to people that have what you want because success leaves clues. Then also unfair advantage. If you know and embody this concept, you're ahead of 99% of all <clears throat> that should be people, it's not only artists anymore. I needed to close down my course for artists. So, um, but I leave it now because you get the point, right? So the reason is because most people are just not aware of it. It, it, sound, it sounds so simple, this concept, right? But if you reflect on your life, like how many times did you listen to someone that didn't have what you wanted? Especially when it's friends, men we uh, mean well-meaning friends. That's what I wanted to say. Especially when it's well-meaning friends. Oftentimes you probably just listen to them even though they didn't have what you want to have, right? So yeah, and most people that don't know this concept, they are unaware of that. And even though it makes absolute sense and it's kind of logical, they just they're just not aware. So that's why it's an unfair advantage to know that. <clears throat> then also mastermind. Share your goals and dreams with us. Don't share it with people that could put doubt in your mind. That's super, super important, right? But it's like there are other people in your life that might not have this growth mindset, they maybe don't believe in the law of attraction. They, they, I don't know, like they say, maybe you're, you're a dreamer, you should be realistic. And whenever you have ideas and goals and dreams and you tell it to them, they, they shut you down immediately. And especially in the beginning stages of creating goals and dreams and having ideas, you should be careful. They, you need to nurture them. And sharing with the right people can actually empower you, can make you even more excited. But yeah, it is important to share it with the right people. So share it with us because we are here to support. So that's it. Leave a testimonial at testimonial.manifestingdreams.com. It's not up yet, but it will be soon. And um, yeah, you can also, when you leave a testimonial, once it's up, you can win special prizes. And here a quote from Alicia Keys, you are what you listen to. And she said, she meant it about music, but I think it's about anything because anything you listen to, people you listen to, movies, videos, yeah, music, even newspapers, because if you read newspapers or you even read a book, it's your own voice, right? So the point of this quote for me is that you have to be careful what you consume because what you consume will ultimately become who you are. It will become your perspective of life. So it's very important that we are mindful of what we consume, what we let in, okay? Also music, by the way. I think a lot of music is kind of evil. I don't want to go too deep into that, but there's some music. If you listen to what they're saying, it's very destructive, very negative. But the sound, you know, the sound is cool. And some of us, I don't know if you, you still listen to music, but I almost don't listen to any music anymore because I became aware of that. I became aware of the negative impact it has on how I feel and see the world, right? But yeah, some of these music, the lyrics is just like so negative. And that's what we put in into our brain. Now, and we listen it over, if we like a song, we listen to it over and over again. And it's literally programming our mind for negativity, right? So yeah, be mindful of that. So that's it guys, 30 minutes in, let's get to work. Keep that like this, this concept always in mind, no matter what you do in life now, just don't listen to your friends or family that don't have what you want. If your family has a beautiful, you know, your father and your mom are together since 40 years, they have the most beautiful relationship. Go ahead and listen to them. You should, but if not, don't listen to them. And it's not about judging people. It's just about protecting yourself, protecting your mind and using also the law of attraction to your advantage. Because again, you become what you think about most of the time, right? If, you, if some people put negativity in your brain constantly, that's what you will think about most of the time. That's why so many of us actually are kind of negative, right? Because most of our family members, they were negative because, you know, that's just how we grew up. I have the feeling like collectively, it's getting better and better, right? Every generation is getting better. They already have access to this knowledge, but our parents maybe didn't have access to this knowledge. They grew up even more negative. So they do their best, but they did put a lot of negativity in, into us, right? So now we have to make sure that we fill our mind with positivity. So all the books we read, the videos we watch, 
everything everything needs to be aligned to what we want which is like in the end of the day like a beautiful life you want to be positive and happy right so put only positive stuff in your mind and then you will also start to see that your life changes actually pretty quickly it's, re it's really really true it's not that hard if you for example if you watch movies and you watch a lot of movies every day and the movies are kind of negative or the news especially if you would exchange that with listening, let's say you watch two, three hours every single day, which a lot of people do. If you would exchange that with listening two, three hours to audiobooks or podcasts around the law of attraction, positivity, mindset, success mindset, if you would do that every single day, within probably within a week, latest two weeks, your life will completely change and you will see the world in a different way. Right? Because our thoughts are not our own. Our thoughts are just a product, a byproduct of what we have consumed. So keep that in mind. So change can actually be way easier than you think. Just if you listen to enough of these things, it's a, things will change. I can promise you that. Without you doing something, you know, trying to change something in your life. Just, just that one thing, just like having the consuming positive content. And if you do that for a while, and by the way, not Instagram. It's, Instagram is all over the place. It's too short. It's actually kind of negative because it, you know, our attention span becomes lower and lower. We can almost not concentrate. We cannot watch like longer videos anymore or interviews or audiobooks. That's not good. It's way better to spend time on a course that's really in depth, that's a bit longer, take your time or an audiobook or reading a book in peace and do that for 20, 30 minutes every day. Your life will change. I promise you that. So yeah, that's it for now. Let's get to work. I'm excited. And let me know if you have any questions in the group. Peace out. Hey guys, welcome to the next video. The biggest secret. It's going to be amazing. You probably already know the secret. But yeah, I think it's a great title. So let's dive right into it. So here's what we are going to cover today. First of all, the power of law of, law of attraction. Then how the law of attraction really works. And lastly, how to start using the law of attraction to your advantage today. That's going to be more practical because we want to already start having changes, positive changes in your life starting today. And hopefully already some good things are happening from the other videos you watch. Because again, like all, all the things that I'm saying, like you're watching this training, you start filling your mind with positive thoughts and it already should start shifting your reality. So follow me on YouTube, Instagram and Facebook for exclusive content links are below then share the course because we want to change lives together i'm warning this is the most important video in the entire course watch the entire video don't skip don't fast forward and pro tip watch it double speed if you want to save some time then the power of the law of attraction let's dive into that because it's going to be amazing first is it real let's find it out because i prepared some cool stuff here then also the how versus the what. We are going to talk about that. And this is very likely what keeps you stuck, actually. And then also become a magnet. Start attracting everything and anything you want by changing your frequency. We are also going to talk about that. So, to the question, is it real? Let's see. I prepared this video for you to show you if it is real or not. Let's see what other people are saying. I want to ask you a question because we, we had a, we just had an interview the other day and you said something that I sort of has stuck with me uh, about what, you know, what makes you afraid. And we were talking about this and Denzel said, uh, I don't remember saying this to me, but you said you attract what you fear. Right. And I've, since we spoke, I've just been thinking about that all the time. What are you afraid of? And do you agree with that comment that you attract what you fear? Apparently, I'm afraid of great actors. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, positively and negative. I mean, you attract. No, I, you know, not just what you fear. You attract what you feel, what you are, what you attract. Yeah, what's on your mind. mind. What's yeah, on your mind. Yes, yeah, 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 it's like exactly. the law of physics. I don't know how anybody can disagree with that. It's, it's just, it, Ask any physicist, they'll tell you yeah, David, David, it's true. Yeah. David Memmer. I think it's a really a marvelous thing, that visualization thing you did. Do you, mm -hmm. all, do you all read about this or hear this? That you used to go up on Mulholland Drive and park. Yeah, every night. And visualize seeing yourself as... Yeah, I would visualize... Uh, yeah, I would this visualize... This is when you were broke and poor. You know, right, having mm -hmm. directors interested in me and people that I respected uh, um, saying, you know, I like your work mm -hmm. or whatever that is. And, 
and uh, I would visualize things coming to me that I wanted or whatever. This and, was in uh, like 1987, 85. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I you... had nothing at that time, so it was like, it, but it just made me feel better. It made me, at that time, all it really was for me was kind of making me feel better. I would drive home and think, well, I do have these things. And they're out there. I just don't have a hold of them yet, but they're out there. Feeling self-help better. books or whatever? Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, self-help section. Self-help section. They renamed it the Jim Carrey <laughs> Wing. <laughs> Just this, I have an insane belief in my own ability to belief. manifest things. Insane belief, you know, that I think it's ultimately complete sanity, but I believe we're creators, and I believe we create with every thought and every word is every moment is pregnant with the next moment of your life total believer yeah i believe in uh, manifestation i believe in uh, you know <clears throat> putting a rocket of desire out into the universe and and you get it when you believe it you get it when you believe you have it and that's the key is like people still they sit around going when's it going to come 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 and that's the wrong way you're, you're facing the wrong way you're facing away from it you have to go it's here it's here it's here are you aware that do you have the distinct palpable feeling that your intention created this evening as well as melissa's do you understand that that all of this this entire event is happening inside you write yourself a check i heard yeah. that you did is that true i wrote myself a check for 10 million dollars for acting services rendered, and I gave myself uh, five years, or three years maybe, and uh, and uh, I dated at Thanksgiving 1995, and I put it in my wallet, and I kept it there, and it deteriorated and deteriorated and stuff, and uh, and uh, but then just before Thanksgiving 1995, I found out that I was going to make ten million dollars on, I think it was Dumb and Dumber. Maybe. Dumb and Dumber. Our intention, our intention is everything nothing happens on this planet without it not one single thing has ever been accomplished without intention you know folks i'll admit it my life is going really really well I, I, many of my dreams have come true and that there are plenty of you who've got huge aspirations and uh, for success too i get emails and tweets all the time from people so many people asking how i did it i try to share the principles of success whenever i can because i have not gotten this far without learning the principles of success and over the years i've just realized that common sense just ain't that common so i often get inspiration from books and one book that resonates with me all the time is this book right here. It's called The Secret. It is the most powerful book outside of the Bible that I have ever read in my life. And the book is based on the law of attraction and how that principle, once you master it, can help you find wealth, happiness, better health, whatever you're looking for, relationships. So let me share some of the concepts that have helped keep me on my game. So the first one is like attracts like. You have to understand, you are a magnet. Whatever you are, that's what you draw to you. If you're negative, you're going to draw negativity. You're positive, you draw positive. You're a kind person, more people are kind to you. So you're like a magnet, you know. And you got to understand something about like attracts like. If you see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hand. This is so true. You got to grab this. You got to create dream boards. You got to put the new car up on your mirror. Put the weight you want to be on the refrigerator. If you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hand. That's the law of attraction. That's what you bring to you. Okay, moving on. The next principle ask, believe, receive. So many people overlook this very simple quality. You don't have to figure it out. That's what freezes people. When you're trying to figure out your life all the way to the end, when you can't figure it out, it freezes you from trying it because you go, oh, well, I can't figure that out. Oh, I can't go over there because I don't know how. You don't have to know how. You have to ask, believe, and receive. That's as simple as it gets, folks. It's very, very true. I really want you to understand that. Now, science says, show me and I'll believe. Faith says, believe and I'll show you. Gratitude 
is a powerful process. The only way to move to the next level is you must show gratitude for where you are. If you show gratitude, it gets you to where you want to be quicker. Very true. Smart. Laughter attracts joy and it releases negativity and it leads to some miraculous cure. Laughter is so big, man. When you're laughing, it just brings a lot of joy into your life. It attracts joy, it releases negativity. A lot of people were surprised when they found out that you've been signing your name as Champ 2011. How did that come about? Uh, you know, I believe in the law of attraction and I believe that um, that you can speak things into existence. And I believe that um, when, you, when you know where you're going and you know what you want, uh, the universe has a way of stepping aside for you. And uh, me signing my, uh, my signature uh, with Champion 2011 on it, um, it can't hurt me. It can't hurt me. It could, uh, it could only help me to believe it even more, you know? So, uh, so, so yeah, I mean, it works for me. Wow, that was beautiful. I got goosebumps and almost tears. Is it so true? I mean, we are growing up in a world where nobody really you know, talks about it. Nobody is telling us that. And we grow up believing all these lies. We think that we are not really powerful, that we don't have power ov over our lives and stuff like that. So, ah, That was beautiful. And... Yeah, and these are really the principles that I'm also teaching here because I didn't even watch the video. I just looked for some videos about celebrities because I know that many, many, many of the celebrities, like most of them, they know about this stuff. Some maybe don't know it consciously, but they still use it. All success is created by the law of attraction. So let's dive into the principles that I'm going to teach you in the power of the law of attraction. First, is it real? The law of attraction is always working. The super, super successful people know. They all use it, either consciously or unconsciously. That's exactly what, what I already said. And it's so true. It's always working. You need to really get that in your mind. The law of attraction, it is real. And the most successful people, they use it. You know, people, especially people that have lasting success, they are aware of it. They know it. They use it. And it really works and that's what we want to we want to start taking advantage of the law of attraction as well and start creating more positive things in our life then belief so we heard jim carrey talk about that and i went that far and i even got a tattoo belief <laughs> on my neck and because it's the biggest thing ever before you can create anything in your life you first have to believe that you can get it and so most of the work you're going to do is by raising the belief, raising your belief of what's possible. Because if you don't believe it's possible, it's not going to work. It's not going to be possible. Right? So very powerful. And then become a magnet. By applying these things in this course, you literally become a magnet for good things. As the guy said, I forgot his name, but he said, like, you like attracts like, right? You attract what you are. If you're negative, you attract more negativity. If you're positive, you attract more positivity. It's the same with, it's, it's, because in the end of the day, everything is energy. Money is energy. Your dream partner is any, energy. Your frequency and your health is energy. Your happiness is energy. If you want these things, you have to become it first. And then 
you literally become a magnet for these things. So how does the law of attraction really work? So let's go in some, some, some more depth so we can really understand it and we can start using it. First of all, the radar screen. Law of attraction is always working. The super successful people know it all and use it either consciously or unconsciously. It's again the same like before, but let's dive deeper into the radar screen. What does this, does this really mean? So yeah, imagine a radar screen, right? And we can see about like 5% of everything that's going on. And the 5% that we see in our life, in our reality, are the things that we attract, attract to us, right? So if you are at the moment negative or you have negative beliefs around money or, or your health, this is what you get in your re radar screen, right? The radar screen is maybe, you know, you see maybe this big, just like 5%. And the 5% you see is what you attract. This is, it's basically a reflection of who you are at the moment. But also, outside of the radar screen, the things that you don't see are like, there's 95%, 95% you don't even see. That means like, the dream partner is out there, your ideal health is out there, your physique is out there, the money you want is out there. There literally, there is so much money in this world and it's all out there. But the problem, it's, it is not in your radar screen. And what comes in your radar screen? It's what you attract. If you want new things, it's already out there. And when you start using the law of attraction and you start, for example, changing your thoughts around money, money starts to come from the 95% of what you cannot see. It comes closer and closer and closer until it's in your radar screen and suddenly you see it. It was all along here. It was always here, but you just couldn't see it, right? And that's kind of being a magnet, right? So if you think positively around money, you feel great around money, that's when it starts to come into your reality and that's also when, when we start seeing synchronicities, right? Synchronicities are basically, let's say, little signs from the universe that you are manifesting, right? Be because before you have the money, maybe you start hearing people talking about money. Maybe you see like a, a movie around money or what else like these are some silly examples but or you, you you start seeing opportunities right maybe somebody is talking to you about a new job that opened up you know your dream job maybe or like a, a friend talks to you about an amazing business idea this is like starting you start to attract the money into your life it doesn't show just it doesn't show up like that right it you start attracting people and circumstances slowly into your life which means you start to see it in your radar screen and then the how versus the what. The how doesn't matter because you don't know how. It's not your job. Your job is to know what you want and why you want it. Like the guy said as well, you, that's why people don't do anything. Like usually when we want to start something, let's say you want to sell your art because we have probably a lot of artists in here or you want to make money from your music or whatever it is, you want to get a better job. We're always like, but how, 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 how? You know, like I don't know how. I have no idea how. I don't even know if it works. Stuff like this, it's, it's, you're, not going to, you're not going to get anywhere like this. It's blocking you from the very beginning, right? And by the way, the how, what does this mean? Why do we focus so much on the how? The how, what it really means. If you think about an idea and the first thought or very soon, you know, maybe you get excited for a little bit, but then you very, your mind goes very soon into the how. What it actually means, it's like doubt. It's doubt. You're doubting that you can actually get it. Right? And we are going to talk about that too. Like how, how do we actually set the right kind of goals, the goals that you believe in? Because there is no purpose in thinking about making 10 million if you have zero belief that this can happen. Because what will happen is like you start doubting and when you doubt, even though you focus on the 10 million, what the 10 million are reflecting to you is doubt and you attract more negative things in your life. Right? So that's the tricky part. But yeah, what you really want to focus on is like you want to get crystal clear on what you want and why you want it. So having you need to have the vision of what you want. Otherwise, you cannot attract anything because your thoughts and your feelings are energy. And when you direct energy in a specific thing, in something you want and you believe with 100% conviction that you can get it, you send powerful energy into the universe. And again, like attracts like. You will attract it in your reality. And the why is actually giving you the fuel. The why, the why is very powerful. Also, not many people talk about that, right? But if you combine what you want with why you want it, bam, you get yourself in such an amazing state. 
as belief receive i actually wrote that down before i watched the video which is really really interest interesting and it's from the book the secret which i'm also reading again i read these books like i'm reading these books over and over again right because it has to become a part of you so ask believe receive is knowing what you want believing you have it already and being in a receptive mode no doubt right that means like receive also means you don't worry about the how right you are like you need to be happy again that's a quote you don't need to be rich in order to be happy but you need to be happy in order to be rich and it's really true because if you are happy if you're in a happy state you're not doubting you're not like worried you're not you know being fearful and all these things which are holding you back to attract what you want you are you are in a receptive mode you are almost like open for the universe to give you ideas and you are open to see the opportunities that are coming into your life so very important first knowing what you want is ask for what you want right then believe that you already have it very important because again if you don't believe it you basically doubt it and you attract you push it away basically and then receive being in a re receptive mode which means feeling good feeling good about what you want and your life the ideal scenario you can get into is like you know exactly what you want you believe you can get it and you feel amazing right that like let's say everything in your life is reflecting gratitude and positivity because sometimes we blame the outside we blame our partner we blame our health you know we blame that we are not there like with the physique we are not there where we want to be or we blame the money we blame our boss we blame all the time and we use these things as a reflection for what we don't want if we can switch that and we make everything in our life a reflection of gratitude and good things can you imagine the power you have to create because then you can channel all this positivity into manifesting what you want it's powerful guys i tell you so then also emotions as your guidance your emotions tell you if you're in a good st state or not go we go deeper into this in the next week week two but your emotions are your guidance right because your emotions will show you if you really think positively or not because you cannot control all, all your thoughts you have so many thoughts right but you can change your emotions you can change your state you have to do certain things that make you feel better long term okay so we go deep into that but your emotions always show you where you're at right if you feel sad if you feel angry disappointed frustrated it means you're not in the right state right now and sometimes it's good to just take a take a step back and starting to do things that make you feel better which is like for example going for a walk starting start to eat healthier and habits also are the habits are a big part because habits are the it's basically we will also go deep into the into that but the habits if you have bad habits it's really hard to feel good long term and it's also hard to break these habits because these are patterns that you developed over a long period of time right also addiction for example addiction is something it pulls you in makes you feel better short term but long term it makes you actually feel worse so these are some things that we also gonna talk about and then let go of resistance resistance blocks your manifestation and shows you usually and shows usually as not trusting and not believing yeah exactly so resistant if you're resistant about anything in your, in your life it basically means you are not trusting the process you're not trusting the universe you're not trusting yourself and usually you don't really believe that you can get what you want right and that is resistance with resistance you're it's the opposite from being in a receptive mode you're blocking yourself from receiving anything new anything positive any opportunities so let go of resistance and then how to start using the law of attraction to your advantage today first take full responsibility of what you've created so far that's the first point before you create anything new you have to really take 100% ownership for everything you have created anything negative but also positive and it's not about blaming yourself it's not about like beating yourself up it's just about seeing the truth because if you take responsibility also for the negative you've created you take back your power because if you created this negative these negative things in your life it means that you can also create something new blaming is the worst if you blame the outside blame other people your parents your friends your ex-partner whoever you are giving up your power 
you're literally giving up your power, which is very sad. So this is the first step. Take full responsibility. And the good news is, since you're doing this course, this is just the first step. When you do this, we go to the next steps of creating more positive things. But you first do have to take full responsibility. And just like a side note, let's say you created a lot of negative things in your life. Forgive yourself. Forgiveness is so powerful, right? I, I think I didn't put this in the course, but it just pops into my mind. Because sometimes we're so hard on ourselves for the things we created, you know, the mess we created. And it can be really hard to take full responsibility because we still beat ourselves up for these things. So forgive yourself. Do a forgiveness meditation if you have to. Forgive yourself and, and be, be, be loving to yourself, right? Don't beat yourself up because beating yourself up actually also um, blocks you from taking full responsibility. Because you don't want to take responsibility because you're afraid of yourself. You're afraid of beating yourself up, right? So if you have this issue, do a forgiveness meditation. Forgive yourself. It's okay. We are all not perfect. We all make mistakes. We are on this journey of life to learn. We are not, go we, we are not poor and we do everything perfect. You know, some of us maybe had a better start than others. But everything happens for a reason and you cannot turn the past back, right? So you have to start where you're at now. And you always had this power, actually. You, you, that's why you always, you created your whole life. But if nobody told you, you didn't know. You didn't know better. And maybe you already knew about these things, but you had never have, you never went deep into that, right? So now is the time to change everything by taking responsibility and forgive yourself for the things you've created that you didn't want to. It's okay. It really is. Okay? Then second step. Create a clear vision of what you want. So that's also in the next video, we, we go really deep in, in creating a vision. So I'm really excited about that because now I also re, yeah, redid my vision. I always have a vision, right? I work with this since a long, long, long time. And I always have a vision because with, an, with a vision, you don't even know where you're going, right? So we get crystal clear on your vision and what you want. That's the first, uh, the second step, right? Then the third one is choose a specific focus. What is most important to you right now? It's very difficult. Especially if you have a mess, like let's say it's a mess in one specific area. And also um, Napoleon Hill talks about that. You have to have a chief aim. You cannot focus on too many things all at once because you spread your energy. And so the more, the, the more you channel your focus in one direction, the faster it comes to you. Um, and also like people talk about balance. Maybe you want a balanced life. Maybe that's what you want. Then focus on that. But usually, let's say there is a mess in your finances. It takes an unbalanced life for a while, not forever, just for a while. And the more you actually focus on this area, and you're very clear that this is your chief aim and you get like very positive about everything in your life. So it's also, that's the thing about the law of attraction. You cannot be positive about your finances and negative about re your relationship. Your relationship will always pull you back. It always will create like it has, you have negative energy in, around your life. So even focusing on one specific area, so for example, finances, and you start feeling so good about it, it also will positively influence your real relationship because everything in the end is connected, right? But you have to choose a specific focus. And that's when you have your vision, we will do that together. You have to choose as well, like what is your specific focus? What's your chief aim? What are you going to focus on for a while, right? And that can be anywhere from a month, three months, six months, a year. It doesn't matter. We will talk about that more in depth. Then visualize yourself in possession of what you want, morning and before sleep. That's a fourth st step, right? And then let's take money as an example because it's an easy example, but it could also be a relationship. Um, yeah, let's take money for an example now, right? You, you, ha you want money. Then you visualize yourself already having the amount of money that you want. And there are different ways to define it. You don't always have to be super, super specific. Usually it's the best if you can be specific, but sometimes it's hard to be specific, right? And, and that often has to do with you, you don't believe that you can attract or manifest a certain amount, right? And then it might be better to just focus on the feeling of it. So let's say this is the case for you. You cannot see yourself like manifesting a specific amount. And every time you do that, you feel doubt. So then visualize yourself with lots of money and having enough money to do everything you want and money is coming like more and more money is coming to you you see the money going up in your bank account you see money laying on your desk and you see yourself doing the things that you want to do with money right every morning and before sleep 
And the most important thing with visualization is you have to feel good, right? But visualization helps you to put in the, it, it starts to, how should I say? It's, it starts the process of you feeling better, right? But make sure when you visualize yourself with money or your dream partner, you have to feel good. If you feel bad visualizing, it usually means you don't believe that you can get it and stop doing the process because it won't work. So that's very important. That's why we go next week more into the into emotions, like the power of emotions and how to actually combine that, right? And um, yeah, let's go in the next step. Fifth one, combine it with gratitude throughout the day, feeling better and better. So yeah, exactly. As I said, gratitude is one of the most powerful tools. So the more grateful you can be for er everything and anything in your life, the more powerful you are as a creator, right? The better you can visualize the better you can manifest things. And even if it's something specific like money, right? If you feel gratitude for, for money and your partner or for your parents, friends, uh, the fridge you have, the food you have, the money you have currently, just like literally anything in your life, the more you feel gratitude, the more powerful you become and the better you feel. And then pro tip, write down this list and keep it somewhere. As I said, we will go deeper into creating your vision and you know starting to put these things into practice, but you can actually already start today. So write that down and put it somewhere where you always see it, okay? And you can also already now start thinking about what you want. But then like once we get to the video where we really define your vision, you already have ideas, right? So let's start already the process by defining what you want. Write down like, just, just do that. By the way, you can do that anytime if you do this every day every day just writing down things you want or oh, i would love to go to spain i would love to have money to do this i would love to go to this restaurant if you do this every day you're already starting to become also more clear of what you want but some people have the issue they don't even know what they want and it's usually because they actually know what they want but they're just blocked negative beliefs about what they can have is blocking them from actually really being able to think about what they want so just starting this process of writing down what you want every day, whenever something pops into your mind, it starts the process of getting you more, becoming more clear of what you want, because like attracts like. If you think about what you want and what you would love, love is a great, great word, by the way. If you say, I would love to do that, that's, that's softer than saying, for example, I want 10,000, right? It can again create resistance, but I would love has a very soft energy and can make you feel better and start already putting your mind into the direction of things you would love to experience and have in your life, okay? Summary, it's been a kind of a short video, but I think it's been, it's been powerful. Let me know your feedback in the group and let me know if you have questions, but yeah, let's do a summary. Celebrities, and I use this as an example because we all admire these celebrities, right? But there are lots of normal people that are not celebrities that are extremely successful and they use, that, they use the law of attraction as well. So all successful people, people use the law of attraction because it's always working and there is no turn on and or turn off switch. Okay, very important. It's always working. You cannot turn it off or on. So that also means it's your life's journey to start becoming a master of the law of attraction because it's always working. The moment you stop, you know, using these, not using these laws, using these principles, and you get in a negative state, that's the moment when you start attracting negative things again. It's, it never stops, it, it, it really doesn't. It's always working. So the best you can do for yourself, for your loved ones, and to really live the best life ever is to make this a part of yourself because you never turn it on or off, okay? And the how versus the but, what? Focus on the what and why. Yeah, don't focus on the how, as we discussed, you don't know the how, the how is blocking you. But we also said and we discussed that oftentimes when you think about the how so much, it means that you don't believe that you can get what you want. And oftentimes it also has to do with defining what do you actually want. Because for example, to be a full-time artist is not specific enough. Because it can feel overwhelming. What does this even mean, right? So what I needed to do is I needed to define very specifically what it means for me to be a full-time artist, how much I want to earn. And then I had clarity and I could work with that, right? And also, it's not that we don't take any action. The how presents yourself. And that also has a lot to do with trust. 
you just have to get in a great state and by the way the moment you get in a great state the mo this is the moment when everything starts to change right it, it things change immediately it doesn't take time the law of attraction doesn't need time for you to start seeing the changes in your life and start attracting better things but you have to make the switch you can you cannot fake it right but the moment you make the switch and you feel really good you feel much better and it's also not about perfection it's just about feeling better than you feel right now that's your that's your job that's what you want to focus on actually and the moment you make the switch and you feel better that's the moment when the law of attraction is bringing better things in your life it's that it's literally that simple actually right and when you feel better by the way it's also easier to define what you want and it's also easy to believe in what you want because you feel good you think about possibilities if you feel bad, it's really, really hard to believe anything, you know? Because, like, I believe unconsciously we know that when we feel bad, we can almost not do anything. It's like, you know, it's hard for us to do, to even do work, right? But when you feel really, really good, you know what you want, it's usually like a joy to do work. But we also talk more about these things. I hope that makes sense. And then also full responsibility. Before you can use it or to create good, you have to take ownership of everything in your life. Yeah, that's as I said, it's the first step. First, take full responsibility. And it can be hard as we discussed, right? But keep in mind, do, do a forgiveness exercise if you have to. If you feel like you, you, you have been very tough on yourself, do a forgiveness exercise. And then focus on taking full responsibility of everything that you have created. And in that moment when you do say, now I'm gonna create better. Now I'm doing like, from today on everything is going to change everything will work out everything will change for the positive tell yourself that after you did the forgiveness meditation you you took ownership from for everything you created and it, it helps to just visualize you yeah, visualize what's going on in my life right now you can even write it down if you want to right write down all the things that are not going well that you created so far and then write down now i'm taking 100% ownership of everything that happened in my life. I t take full responsibility. I forgive myself because I'm not perfect. I'm here. I'm a student of life. I'm always learning. I'm always getting better and it's okay. I forgive myself. I love myself. And then write down, for, but f and then you write down from today on, everything is going to change. Everything is going to get better and better and better. Yeah, powerful. Then action steps. Do the action steps and start to create more good in your life, starting right now. Okay, so hopefully you wrote down the action steps. If not, do them now. Go back in the video, write them down and keep them somewhere because it will be very helpful for you to always remember these action steps, right? These, these I think it was five, right? <laughs> these five steps, right? To always remember, always remind yourself of these five steps and then you can also use it like the best idea, like I have, for example, my goals here, right? So I always see them. So ideally it would be if you have this there, so that you always can see it when you watch the training, for example, you always see these five steps. Magical. Yeah, you just set powerful energies in motion. Look out for synchronicities and things manifesting. You know, you are, like you listening to me is already starting the process, by the way, because I'm planting seeds in your mind. I'm planting positive seeds in your mind. I'm telling you things that everything is possible. I'm telling you like you can have whatever you want if you really believe you can get it. You watch the video about like Jim Carrey talking about this stuff. So I'm planting seeds. So, you know, believe me, it's already working. Things, or, things start to change right now in your life. I, I promise you that. And the more you listen to that, the more things start to change and switch for the, for the positive. Yeah, and now a quote. As far as I can tell, it's a... It's just about letting the universe know what you want and working toward it while letting go of how it might come to pass. Jim Carrey, beautiful quote. And it's really true, right? We, we covered all of this. Like, what do you want? Letting the universe know. And by the way, you don't necessarily need to talk to, you, to the universe like this, but it can help. You thinking about it is already talking to the universe. You communicate to the universe at any given moment. Anything you think and feel is a communication to the universe. And the universe is your biggest supporter. The universe gives you whatever you think and feel, right? It's all, it's, it's, you are a creator. And letting the universe know by, you know, writing down things you want, by feeling better, by thinking about amazing things, visualizing what you want, 
you are letting know the universe of what you want and then you have to let go of the how and again it's this is way easier letting go of the how is way easier if you feel good and if you start seeing in your life like positive things and opportunities coming into your life you start to believe more and more in this process and it's going to be easier and easier and you start building positive momentum so now let's get to work let me know how you like this video. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm here for you guys. I'm here to help you manifest anything and everything you want. Let's change lives together. First, we change your life and then we change other people's lives too. Okay, talk soon. Hey guys, this is Oliver. Welcome to Cultivating a Success Mindset. It's gonna be a short video, but still important to go through. But I'm also planting seeds. Always remember that. When you watch these videos, I'm planting seeds. There is repetition, but repetition is the key of success. Okay? Because you can't just hear something once or twice. You have to hear it again and again and again and again. And then things start changing in your mind. So here's what we're going to cover. First, the power of positive thinking. Then the giver mindset. Overcoming self-doubt and fear of failure. Daily practices for maintaining positivity. So follow me on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook for exclusive content. Links are below. Share this course and let's change lives together. And warning, this is the most important video of the entire course. Don't skip forward. Watch the whole video. And uh, pro tip, watch the video in double speed. So the power of positive thinking. What will we cover here? First, we talk about focus, which basically means we always attract where we focus on the most. Right? We talked about this before. As I said, repetition is key. So again, focus. Your focus is your most powerful tool, right? Because you attract basically, first of all, things that you focus on most of the time. And also, like there are two things that are very important if you want to manifest anything. First is like the the intensity of your focus. That means how excited are you? about this thing that you focus on, right? That can be also like, if you're very, very, very fearful about something, something happening, that's intense focus and it will create it. So the more intense your focus is, and again, that means like you focus on what you want and you feel strong emotions. And we wanna get in a state where we feel amazing, so excited to, to get what we, what we want and we're already f freaking excited about it. There's no doubt, nothing like that, that's just like, pure excitement or maybe it doesn't need to be excitement right it can be other other feelings as well it depends on what you want but yeah the intensity of the focus and the duration of the focus determines how fast you're going going to attract what you want and the duration is of course like how long do you do that i mean if you just do it for one day and then you switch your focus nothing is really coming your way or yeah because you keep changing your mind you keep changing your focus so imagine focus as your as your tool, as your superpower to attract everything you want. So the more intense you think about what you want and the longer you can hold it, like the duration of it, like every single day, you know, for three weeks, four weeks, you can be, I can promise you, you will attract it. But of course, I also believe in divine timing. So we shouldn't pressure ourselves. And we will talk about that more. Also about like setting goals with time frames and stuff like that. We will talk about that also more in depth. But exactly, your focus is basically like, it's your superpower. Okay, so you attract what you focus on the most. The more intense and the longer you do it, the faster it will come. And there was something else I wanted to say, but I kind of, it slipped my mind. So let's continue. Negativity bias. Humans have a bias towards negativity. That's why we have to work against it with conscious effort. I actually would reword it a little bit because work against it sounds again like resistance. We want to let go of resistance, right? But we want to be aware that we really, for whatever reason, have a negativity bias, right? It's kind of easy. The, the negativity is like, it pulls, it can pull us in. And oftentimes to think positively, we have to put in effort. And that's the main point here. You have to put, a, you have to put in effort. And I can promise you the effort, especially if you have a big negative bowl, like you, you have a momentum around negativity, what you want to do is you don't want to you know do more action in the outside you want to put in effort in your thoughts and your feelings how you think and how you feel that's the main of effort that you want to put in and change make the switch from negativity to positivity because then everything will start changing and yeah focus the momentum that's what i wanted to mention so the more intense you think about something and the longer you do that 
the faster you, faster you attract something and there is something called like momentum. That's a cool thing. So in the beginning, it might take more conscious effort to actually focus on what you want, feel really good about it and do it every day, right? You have to put in conscious effort. But because of momentum, which comes naturally, the more you focus on something, the more you get excited, the more you attract like-minded thoughts. Do you say like-minded thoughts? You know what I mean, right? So the more you get, you, you yeah, you can imagine it as a snowball, right? It's first very small, especially when you start with this, and then it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. And on one point, it rolls down the mountain, and it has so much speed, which we call momentum. And then this is all effortless. And then negative side of it is the same happens with negativity, right? So if you focus on negativity for a while, you have this big snowball that's running down the mountain, and it's very hard to stop. So you just be aware of that if you're there, you can make the switch. Especially listening to, you, to this program, you are already changing, right? Then books. Leaders are always readers. That's again, it's all about the thinking. So that's why the power of positive thinking. If you are uninspired, you don't have any ideas, you don't know what to do, you, you kind of negative, read books. It's one of the tools that I always use to get in a positive mindset. And on top of that, I would also say watch these courses, right? Because you are doing the same thing. You're, you're consuming positive information that will help you to think more positive. Right? And books is powerful, especially today where we have like the short attention span. Being able to focus on reading a book, that's also training your focus, by the way. A reason why many people cannot focus on their dream or what they want anymore intensely and for a long period of time is because they, they in generally lost focus. And that's because of, you know, social media. Yeah. I don't know if you were ever thinking about that, but it's true. So reading books for like 20 minutes, it's, it's training your focus. And your focus is your superpower. Gratitude, every morning and night before sleep. That's already one exercise I'm giving you right now because we want to change things to the positive right away. And by the way, the next video will be about creating your vision. So it's going to be an exciting video and I'm super, super excited. I'm, I'm showing you also my way to create a vision and I learned from, I did so many programs. I went deep into the law of attraction. I did life book. I learned from business mentors. I learned from so many mentors around like how to create a vision. And I figured out how to create a vision that's really, really powerful and thus make you feel good. Because I made visions that made me feel pressured. It made me feel bad. And... I found a way, I would say. So I will show you that. It will be something that you probably haven't seen before. So super exciting. Yeah, back to gratitude. Every morning and night before sleep, do a grati gratitude practice. You can just do it in your mind. Ask yourself, what am I grateful for? And then go through everything. I'm grateful for my bed. I'm grateful for the beautiful day I had. I'm grateful for the food I could eat. I'm grateful for the roof over my head. Just like go through it. In the beginning, you might feel not so grateful especially if you haven't used that for a while. So again, this is the same. Like the more you do it, the more you start getting momentum. And on one point, you're at the place where you feel the gratitude very strongly, right? But you want to make this a habit in general. Like if everything in your life reflects gratitude towards you, you have so much positive en energy to create anything you want, right? But in, in the opposite, if everything or like a lot of things in your life represent or reflect to you negativity, you have almost no power to create anything positive. So gratitude, one of the most powerful tools, definitely start using that. And you can also, if it's easier for you to write it down, write, write down 10 to 20 things every, every morning and every night. Just start, put it, just make, make it a habit, right? And that's again, that's not really like taking physical action. If you have a problem in your life, it's not like go, going out and solving the problem. But this one exercise is internal work that's going to change the way you think about your problems you get better ideas, you take different action, it's just gonna change everything, I tell you. First, like do the, if you are aligning with your positive or with your higher self internally, and you're like at your best internally, everything in the outside is gonna change and it's gonna be so much easier to find solutions. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing. So it's important to do that, right? Don't take that lightly. The inner work is extremely important. So do gratitude every morning and night. The giver mindset, let's go into that. That's a beautiful way of seeing life and it's something also to practice. And there's this one book, The Go-Giver, one book that inspired me so, so much, a beautiful book, especially about business because so many of us, we want to create more money, we want to be more free, you know, maybe be our own boss, travel the world, stuff like this. So 
the best way to do that is ha having your own business, right? It's very hard to do these things when you're employed. But some of you want to be employed and these strategy in the books will also help you there because it's just the general mindset about being a giver and there's this mind like this other mindset is be, being the the go how, how is it called the, the go getter right which is also a, it also has you know it's also a good mindset but this mindset from go getter towards go giver is just a more beautiful way of living because if you give you will get back it's just how it is the more you give the more get comes back to you yeah and there is also the book about selling more. So if you're in sales, I highly recommend you this book, right? So and if you like, if you have your business, you are in sales, right? So I really highly recommend this book, both of them. First, read the the red one, which is the you know the the story, and the go giver sell more is then how to use, you know, this what you learned from the go giver to your business to sell more. So so you get kind of specific tips. The secret of living is giving and it's so true the more you give the more you get back it's just like this is how it works because again like you get what you put um, you get back what you put out right and it's the same with your focus focus on positivity that's what you get back so you get what you give and here are some of the laws from the giver mindset from the go giver so the law of value your true worth is determined by how much more you give in value than you take in pay payment very important whatever you do also we have lots of artists here probably so if you are doing art then find a way to give them more value than you take in payment and i know it's it can be abstract and hard as an artist it might be easier in some other businesses right but just keep that always in mind and it can be with simple things listen to a person make time for that person like give some 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 gifts you know when you sell something add some extra gifts that where you don't ask anything in return um may like just be a good friend as well right help these people be nice to the people so yeah the law of compensation your income is determined by how many people you serve and how well you serve them that's very very true and it's common sense but sometimes we forget that right but if you're selling something to 10 people you have a certain amount of income right versus you sell something to 100 or 1000 people and also the more the better you the better you are at what you're doing the better your service let's say the more people you can reach and the the more people will buy what you have right if it's a service or product anything like that the law of influence your influence is determined by how abundantly you place other people's interest first yes powerful everybody thinks like influence is like you know having having in forefront what you want and somehow influencing or manipulating the person to get what you want. This is the wrong view of influence. The influence is determined by how, how abundantly you place other people's interests first. That's real influence, right? Because again, it's the law. You get what you give, but we forget that. We really, for, we really think and, and you, feel, you, you feel it or you smell it miles away if somebody has their own interest more in mind than your interest right and i know people like that they have and you feel it it's not something against them it's not being mean but you just feel it everybody feels it we are all more intelligent than we think we, we pick up stuff everybody picks up stuff so if you want something but you are just thinking about what you want you're not gonna get far but if you always think what the other person wants and how can you give this person what they need and make a deal you know make it if you want to make a deal with a person you have to give the person what they need and that means you have to be like very very in like you need to be interested in giving the person what they need and want right but if you want to make a deal and you just come up with things that you want and you make the deal with the person this person knows if you were thinking about her or him versus just yourself okay so very important the law of authenticity the most valuable gift you have is you have to offer is yourself very important this is so true because people also that's another thing people feel and everybody wants to be free and authentic everybody wants to be themselves so imagine how inspiring it is if you're just if you if you're just yourself right because so many of us have masks and we are ashamed of who we are and we think we need to be different and of course we want to change for the positive but yeah, not having, we, we don't want to 
have masks to pretend to be someone that we are not. Authenticity is inspiring and it's the biggest gift you can offer to people. The law, the law of recept receptivity, the key, of, the key to effective giving is to stay open to receiving. And that's so true. You can only give if you're also able to receive. If you block receiving, which means you don't, you, you cannot take compliments, you cannot receive money. People want to give you stuff, but you always say, no, 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 it's okay, it's okay. You're blocking yourself also from giving. So it's always important to stay open to receive, especially also with the universe, right? Because the universe will give you. So basically, if you some, someone wants to give you something, even if it seems like it comes out of nothing or like, you're, how did I deserve that? It's the universe bringing you, bringing you what you want through people, events, and circumstances. So let's go into overcoming self-doubt and fear of failure. A big one. So belief. Set goals you actually believe you can achieve. That's a big one. We will talk about that more in the next video because that's where we create our vision, right? So we will talk about belief because that's something many don't talk about, right? If you set too high goals and you, yeah, let's say you want to make... Let's say you're making 5,000 per month and you set the goal to make 50,000 in one year. Be honest to yourself. Do you really believe you can get it? Because if you don't, you start doubting yourself and you actually push away what you want. So it makes, it makes much more sense to set a goal that you can actually believe. Let's say your, your, your belief goes till 10,000. You're like, I make 5,000 a month, month. I can believe I can make 10,000. Yes, I really believe it. I don't know how, but I believe. I believe I can do that. Go for that. If you're like 50,000, you're like, you get nervous. And maybe you're excited because you watched a motivational video, but this will drop. And so in the beginning, you're excited. And then later on, you start getting really worried and you feel pressured and, and doubt kicks in. Don't focus on the goal. Not yet. Right? So if you set goals that you don't believe in, that triggers doubt. Comparison. You are on your own journey. Exactly, like, you know, don't compare yourself with other people. Take them as an inspiration because that's actually a powerful tool. If you want to do anything in your life, to raise your belief, you should look at other people that have done what you want to do. The more examples you get of what you want, the more you stop believing that you can do that too, right? But don't compare your journey to them. For example, I look at examples of uh, millionaires, people that became millionaires in their 20s. And I'm already almost 30. And that for a long time, it started triggering me because I compared myself to them. And I'm like, they are 20, 20, in their 20s and they're already millionaires. And I'm, all, I'm almost 30. And I don't even know if I can do it. I just have one year more to become a millionaire. It, it, I compared myself to them and it made me feel really, really bad. Yeah, not good, right? Just don't compare yourself. Use people as an inspiration, but don't compare yourself. We are all on our own journey and everything happens in the right time for each of us. I also believe there is a bigger plan for all of us. So trust the universe that you will get what you need and want in the right timing. Only focus on the future. Balance it out with being present and gratitude. Yeah, being only focused on the future can again trigger these negative emotions. So we want, we want to balance that out by gratitude, feeling really good in the now and being present. And the, the, by the way, the easiest way to feel good, uh, no, the easiest way to be present is feeling good now, right? But even if you feel negative, you should still be present with your feelings. But that's usually when we start distracting ourselves because we don't want to feel what we feel. But actually feeling the negative emotions will just make them go away. Program your mind. Reprogram your mind with gratitude, re reading books and meditation and so on and so forth. So you literally reprogram your mind doing these things. So you do the same with watching this video and this course. You're reprogramming your mind. So always do that. Again, we talked about this already before. What you consume is what you become, right? So always keep that in mind. And I will give you actually tools that you can use at any given moment. I will make a whole, there will be a whole tr program or library with tools. All the tools I discovered over the you know, over my journey, like everything, literally everything I know. And there are some really, really cool tools that you can use. And I will also describe when to use each of these tools, because some tools are better for, you know, for example, if you feel really, really bad and tired, you go for a walk or you, you feel like confused, hopeless. You don't know what to do. You don't know what to focus on. You don't know what you want. Then there is another tool and another exercise. So that's going to be very exciting, having this toolbox, let's say. <clears throat> Deathbed. The ultimate failure is never having risked anything. 
never having done anything because of fear and doubt. What will you really regret in the end of your life? Having done things and failed or not, not having tried at all? That's a great exercise. It's also like just to imagine yourself. Fear of failure is just, it's just an irrational fear. And by the way, the ego is always afraid to die, to die right? So there's a, an, like a deep fear we have all. And the fear is, the fear is the fear of death, really. And that's sometimes also why we're afraid to fail or try things because the ego is literally afraid to die. It's crazy. But anyways, like, yeah, just ask yourself that if you're afraid of failing and tra trying anything, taking risks, just see yourself like, what will, we, what will you regret more? Having it played safe and never tried anything or having actually tried and failed? I mean, literally, what's the worst thing? You know, like we, sometimes we need to define if you have fa fear of failure, what are you afraid of exactly? What, what's the worst thing that can happen? Because like I can tell you, the most successful people, they don't see failure as failure. They see that as something good because every so-called failure will get you closer to where you want to go. Okay, so keep that in mind. Daily practices for maintaining positivity. So here are all the practices. They are not all, but there are some that you can start implementing. So meditation, gratitude, affirmations, no complaining, that's a hard one, break negativity, uh, break negative habits, which is also a hard one, focus on one thing, reading books. So these are different habits you can start implementing. I recommend you do gratitude, meditation. Again, it depends if your mind is all over the place. You have so many thoughts. You might need to calm down your mind before you can actually do anything positive with gratitude or affirmations. Because your, your mind needs to be kind of open for to receive gratitude and affirmations. Because otherwise, you, you're so, your glass is full and you want to fill it with more. So in this case, meditation might be the best for you. If you're already feeling quite calm, but kind of negative, maybe gratitude. So anyways, this is up to you to choose, but start to start to implement positive habits. And if you already do some of these, add another one, right? And also like not doing things is powerful because sometimes it's not just about doing more. It's also about stopping to do certain things and complaining is a big thing. I just had a time. It was just like actually a month ago or something. I started complaining about people here and and the more and more people were unfriendly to me. And then I'm like, I have to stop complaining about that. I did it. I stopped complaining. And then suddenly everybody's been nice to me. And I'm like, it's crazy. These things really work, right? And then there may, maybe there is also a negative habit because we will talk about addiction. And some negative habits are you're literally addicted to it, right? Because that's how our brain is wired. We get addicted to positive habits and negative habits. So, and some things are harder to break than others, right? So maybe there are some habits that you have to break. And when you break them, you, you release so much negative energy and you start feeling so much better, right? But yeah, these are some things that you can start practicing immediately. To know and not to do is not to know by Kevin Trudeau. And that's a, I love it. It's so genius because it sounds so simple. But ask yourself, especially when you have, when you're thinking, oh, I know this stuff. Ask yourself, do you really know it? Do you have the results that you want in your life? Are you actually doing them? Because we think knowing it just like th theoretically, we think knowing something theoretically is knowing it. No, it's not. Really knowing something is doing it and implementing it. So always keep that in mind. And I check myself. I check myself constantly because we all have these thoughts. I always tell myself to know and not to do is not to know. What am I not? What am I not doing that I think I already know? Powerful one. And then summary. So first, giver mindset, you get what you give, right? The secret of living is giving. Powerful thing, read the books, it's very inspiring. Then positivity is a habit. If you take care of the food you give your body, you also have to take care of what kind of food you give your mind. What you consume will literally become your worldview, your reality, right? And it's a habit, it really is. And again, you can build momentum. If you build up a, a big momentum around negativity, it's gonna be hard, it takes more effort, but stick with it. The more you do it, the better you will feel. And at one point you have, you built up this huge positive momentum and it's gonna be effortless, you know? And of course, I have to say, sometimes things happen, right? And we get thrown back and we feel bad. It just happened to me. And things like this will happen in our life. But we also have to get good in actually 
you know, dealing with setbacks because the way you see it, you can either get, go really deep into negative and, and ask yourself, why did this happen to me, blah, 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 and, and start like dig, digging the hole of negativity again. Or you're like, I trust that everything happens for a reason. Everything always works out for me. You know, um, you cannot connect the dots looking forward, but you can always connect them looking backwards. It's something I started saying myself, especially when something kind of bad happens. I'm like, everything happens for a reason. I don't know why. It feels bad. It looks like it's bad, but there is a reason that this happens, right? And one great sentence I learned from one of my friends is when something bad happens, ask yourself, why is this the best thing that ever happened to me? And write down what comes to mind. It, it feels so cu counterintuitive because we are trained to think that when something negative happens, it's bad and it's negative. But what if this is not the true? What if the universe is actually protecting you from something, right? So positivity is a habit. Then step by step, don't try to change everything at once. Choose one thing you're going to improve. Yeah, with the habits, don't try to change everything. That creates a, a lot of pressure and can make you feel actually really, really bad. Just change one thing, one thing at a time. Don't overwhelm yourself. Then feelings, the best way to use this technique is by paying attention to your feelings and to do what makes you feel better for the long term, not short term pleasure. Yeah, and that's also these habits, you know. Also, I should have put, yeah, I should have put in as well walking in nature because it's a beautiful one, really helps. But yeah, it's really feeling better and I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about them more and more. It's not about feeling short term pleasure and especially addiction is all about that. You feel better short term, but long term it has negative effect on, on you and long term you're gonna feel actually worse and worse and worse. So it's very important to break addictions, but don't worry, no pressure because I, again, if you are pressuring yourself about certain things too much, you're creating more negativity. So it's very important that you are like approaching this with a lot of self-love, self-care, forgiveness and being kind to yourself. Very important. Now, all that we are is a result of what we have thought, Buddha. So these things are, it's nothing new. You know, people in the past always knew these things. So it's just like using these things to our advantage and becoming aware of the truth and becoming aware of the power actually. But sometimes we forget how powerful our thoughts and our feelings are, right? So yeah, let's get to work. It was an exciting video, hope you liked it. And we'll talk soon. Hey everyone, welcome to Create Your Vision. This is probably gonna be my favorite video. And also the other two videos are gonna be amazing because it all will build up on each other, right? It's, it's gonna be exciting. So let's dive right into it. Here's what we are going to cover. First, why you should have a clear vision, then gain 100% certainty and remove doubt. Doubt is a big thing. So we are gonna talk a lot about that. Then also my journey to creating a compelling vision. I will show you like, how did I create all of this? Like, how did I come up with that? Because it's not just my, my own stuff. I learned it from different mentors and then I created something that included all of the best things that I've learned to creating your vision. Then we are going to create your vision, right? So this will be about creating your vision. Essential reading for vision creation. And then ever changing and evolving. Let me change that quickly. So now I need to go down again. I think it's better on this side. So you can read everything. So yeah, ever changing and evolving. So follow me on YouTube, Instagram for exclusive content, links below. Share this course and let's change people's lives together. Warning, this is the most important video in the entire course. Don't, you know, watch the whole video, don't skip, don't fast forward. But pro tip, if you wanna go through it faster, watch it in double speed. So, why you should have a clear vision? That's the question. First, your compass. Without it, you don't even know where you're going. Right, so it's important, you need to know where you're going. Otherwise, other people will make decisions for you, right? They will tell you like, they will use you to get to where they wanna go. And if you don't have a vision, you're always like a leaf in the, in the wind. You just don't know where you go, right? So the vision is your compass and you need to have one. If you wanna do anything in your life, you have to have a vision. It's, it's, this is essential, okay? The motivation, you, we are the happiest when we work towards something worthwhile. That's very true. So real motivation, not like short-term motivation. The real motivation comes from having a goal, having a vision that you work toward, that you work towards, right? And that's also when you're the happiest. 
And it's, it's really true. You're not the happiest when you actually get there. It's when you work to so, towards something that you really care about. Then like attracts like. You become or you get what you think about most of the time, as we already know, right? You can only attract what you put out. If you want to create something beautiful, something amazing, an amazing life that you're proud of and you're really happy with, you have to first create it in your mind, right? And then, let's dive into that. That's going to be amazing because a lot of you will have this problem with doubt. So gain 100% certainty and remove doubt. So first, what is holding you back? There are two things. Either it's not knowing what you want or lack of belief. It's one of these things. If you, like some of you already know what you want. But you're still stuck, like you're still, you know, you actually say it, you, you doubt yourself. Lack of belief is doubt, right? So it's one of these things. So first, you need to have a very clear vision. Sometimes life is changing, changing things happen in our life and we kind of, we don't know what we want anymore because we are always changing, right? We're not, never the same. You don't make one vision and it's going to be the same forever. Some things will change, some things will ch uh, stay. So not knowing what you want or lack of belief. These are two of the things that are actually holding you back. Then burning desire. You need to have a burning desire for what you want. Otherwise, the energy will be too weak. That's big. So just wanting something or wishing something is not enough. You don't have enough energy there to actually manifest it and create it in your life. So if you really want to make a change and create something amazing in your life, you need to have a burning desire. And we're going to talk about how to find out what you have a burning desire for or how to get a burning desire. Then believe. You have to believe with 100% certainty that you can get that you can get it. Otherwise, doubt will creep in. Yes, doubt is basically just it's um, how do you say? It's basically it basically comes from not believing what you what you want. You know, like you believe you cannot get what you want. And we're also going to talk about that in more depth. Okay, but that's a big one. So I don't want you to focus on things that you don't believe you can get, because then you will just doubt. And what do you attract? Will you attract the goal or will you attract the doubt? Yeah, you attract the doubt because you get what you focus on most of the time, right? Even if you focus on your vision, but every time you focus on it, doubt comes in and the doubt is way bigger than the belief, you will attract more of that. The sweet spot, focus on things that are very high on desire, 8 to 10, and very high on belief, 8 to 10. So we are going to do an exercise actually where we find the sweet spot. Because if you find something, because we want a lot of things, right? We want to have a lot of things in this world because this world is beautiful. There's so many things we can have and experience and do. So of course, it's like, it's, I see it as a playground, right? And we can decide what we want. But we need to learn the rules of how to get what we want. And not how to you know stay in our own way so that's why we are doing this and so if you find these two things something you are very excited about burning desire and high belief you're gonna get it for sure and then increase belief if you don't have a high belief in any of them you have to increase your belief and how you increase your belief is very simple whatever you want to do if you have a goal and you really want it you have a burning desire but not a high belief first of all make this make, make the vision a bit smaller maybe that will help right maybe you need to break it down maybe this whole thing that you're thinking about right now is too big then make it smaller so that you actually can believe in it the other thing is like increase your belief by looking at people that already did it you know there's this famous story about this runner that i don't remember the details to be honest i'm very bad with remembering details like that but anyways you probably know the story there was a runner and nobody could run that fast in this short amount of time never ever in history one guy believed he could do it and that's the hardest thing to believe in something even though you have no no evidence in your in 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 your reality you have no evidence at all nobody ever did it that's the hardest thing but some people they can believe it for whatever reason i actually think that we are, have, you know, our dreams and the things we want, it's not by accident. We have been given these desires. And if, if you already have a desire, if you want something, it means something. It, it's, meant, it's meant to be here for a reason, right? You, but not all of the things that we think we want, we really want. So that takes us to exploration. But yeah, there was the story. He ran and he broke the record. And after that, like one person after the next broke the record too. And before, nobody in history did it. And why suddenly so many could do it as well? Because they had an example of somebody that already did it. So it raised their belief of, of it's actually possible. So I want you to do the same. Start looking for people that already have what you want. right? Whatever this is in earning a certain amount of money with a certain business, just look at evidence. Look at 
people that are already doing it and even make a vision board you know like put that on a vision board with all the people that you know made a certain amount of money with this business that you also want to be in the worst you can do is actually looking for evidence that it's not possible looking at the odds and people love talking about that people love, love to talk about facts right but this is not how the universe works the law of attraction is real it's more powerful than anything it's more powerful than any odds or any you know facts so-called facts facts are usually just opinions but I hope you get the point, right? So you want to raise your belief by looking at people that already did what you want to do. And then gain clarity. What would you do? So that's actually an exercise right now. So what would you do, be or have if everything is possible and you couldn't fail? And you just won the lottery and have 5 million on your bank account. What would you do, be or have? Okay? Think about that. So now that's going to be the exercise. Pause this video and set an alarm for 10 minutes, okay? Do it right now and write down exactly this question, okay? What would you do, be or have if everything is possible and you couldn't fail and you just won the lottery and have 5 million on your bank account? Maybe 10 million, 15 million. It doesn't matter. You have so much money that you can have whatever you want. Pause the video, set an alarm for 10 minutes and write everything down. I recommend a piece of paper and a pen. You can do it on the computer. I just recommend it on piece of paper with a pen, okay? And when you've done it, you click on the video and we are going we, we are going to the next step. And you really have to pause right now, okay? Because you cannot know the other steps before you did that. So I'm waiting. Okay, hopefully you did it and you have your list. You set an alarm to 10 minutes. You have a list with all the things that you want. And maybe you already start to feel excited. The next step is rate your desire from 1 to 10. Rate everything you wrote down based on how much you really want it from 1 to 10. How much, like how excited are you about these things? Scan the list and rate everything from 1 to 10. 1 is like, I actually don't really want it. I just thought, but somebody told me I'm not really interested in that. So it's a 1 or a 2. And a 10 is like, absolutely, I, I must have this. This is, I always wanted it. I'm, I'm getting excited just thinking about it. Okay, do that. Take a bit of time, like five minutes, however long you need to do it. So post the video and do that. Good, hopefully you did it. And then we go to the next step. Now rate your belief from one to 10. Do the same thing again, based on how much you really believe you can get it from one to 10 in a time frame of six months, right? Because this is gonna change a lot if, if we say like in two years. Of course, your belief is going to be higher, but also when we set a goal for like two, three years, for our mind, it's so far away that we usually cannot even see, you know, it becomes just, it's just too far away. It becomes unreal, you know, because we don't really like time is a concept, right? So we want to use the six months now to just get more clear on the things that you can believe that you can get at this point in time, right? Because six months is not that much time, but it is some time to actually start doing things. Okay, so from one to 10, how much do you really believe you can get it within six months? Do that right now, and then we will back. We'll be back. Okay, hopefully you did it. So you, you have now your list, right? And of course you can cross off all the things, you know, that are below Let's do that right now. So let's cross off everything that's below an eight in desire and belief. But these things you don't even need to think about right now. Especially like, you know, why would you focus on something that's a desire like five, six, seven? Or even below, of course, like below doesn't even make sense. You don't even really want it. Well, it was maybe just a wish. So you have, you wanna cross off everything that's below an eight. For desire, do the same for desire right now. Okay, pause the video quickly and cross off everything that's below an eight from the desire level. Perfect. Now you do the same with belief. Cross everything off that's below an eight. Do that right now. Awesome. So now you should have a list, which is probably very small, maybe just one thing, maybe just a few things. If there are non-goals, like things that you wrote down, that are both believe and desire at least an eight, we need to talk, right? So post in the community and say that's you. You didn't have anything that's like eight to 10, okay? Now there are maybe some things that are six desire and eight, nine, 10 belief, which is still good. 
But ideally, let's go to the next thing. Exactly. Ideally, you have something that's an 8 to 10 belief and 8 to 10 desire. That's the sweet spot. And that could be your chief aim, to pick the one with the highest desire and the highest belief. Napoleon Hill talks about the chief aim. He says you need to have a chief aim, which means something you focus on. That's the thing why you, you, it's, you cannot really create something if you focus on too many things all at once. Because your energy, your focus, which creates, your focus creates, right? Because it's energy. If you have your focus on too many things all at once, you're not really going to bring anything in your life. Except, of course, you can be more, let's say, unspecific and just focus on feeling good, feeling amazing, and then you attract good things in your life, which is also a way to go about life, right? But this is about creating specific things. So pick the one with the highest desire and the highest belief. Visualize. So that's an exercise right now. So get ready. If you have already your chief aim, the one thing with the highest belief and highest desire, and now we are going to do a quick meditation, visualization, and close your eyes. Okay? Take a moment to get ready, get comfortable, maybe drink a sip of water. And now, you close your eyes and take a few deep breaths, okay? So now start to visualize what you picked, right? If it's money, see the money in front of you on your bank account. See what you're doing with the money. Maybe it's holidays, maybe going to an amazing restaurant. Maybe it's a, your ideal partner. Maybe it's a new car. Whatever it is, see yourself having it already, okay? And pay attention to the smell. How does it smell? Pay attention to the colors. Make it very colorful. Okay, and also see your surroundings. Who is with you? Are you alone? Are you with someone? Maybe the sounds, like do you hear, do you hear birds? Are you outside? What do you hear? Who do you hear, right? So really pay attention of your surrounding, having it already. And now pay attention to how you feel. How do you feel in possession of it? How does it make you feel? How excited are you? How happy are you? How amazing do you feel? How blessed do you feel? How does it feel now? Finally, you have it. You were working so hard and now you have it. It's yours. How blessed do you feel? How amazing do you feel? Just enjoy it for a bit. Be in there. Just be in there. Smell it. Hear it. Your surroundings. See the colors. Feel how you feel. Feel all the emotions that come up. Everything that comes up. Just be in there a bit, enjoy it. Okay, now take a few more breaths. Now you can open your eyes quickly. I love to do this, you know, when I end the meditation, with my hands up and then down. Then your hands are kind of by your heart. And then thank the universe or God or whoever you want to thank. Thank yourself for having this. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you now that I have it. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. I'm so blessed. I'm so lucky. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, open your eyes. How do you feel? I'm guessing you feel amazing. Right? If not... We need to address the issue because if you don't really feel amazing, it's usually either you don't really care so much about it, so the desire is not that high, or if some, some, like something came up, I don't know how, or you started feeling bad, it actually means that you're st still doubting for whatever reason. It's still, the, the belief is still not high enough because the belief exercise, like rating from 1 to 10, takes really 
honesty. You have to be really, really honest and you do that for yourself. It's not just because you rate it higher that you better. It's not about that. It's about just gaining clarity because we are where we at, right? And we shouldn't compare ourselves to other people. It's so like we are where we at and we are in the perfect place. And we have to be honest because if you have something that you don't fully believe in, it will trigger doubt and it will make you feel actually worse while you focus on it. And we don't want that because then you, you're not going to attract it. You actually push it away and you start attracting actually negative things because that's what you feel and that's what you put out. Ideally, you feel amazing. If you feel amazing, congratulations. This is something you could focus on and use it as a chief aim if you want to. If not, if you're still not sure, you can do this exercise again and again. But if you feel aligned with this one thing that you visualize and you, it feels amazing and you feel like you, you got the right thing, you have the sweet spot, you have your chief aim, you can use that. So write it down somewhere, write it down. And then also like when the time goes on, you can actually refine it. It doesn't need to be the same forever, but you can also refine it and we will talk about that later. But yeah, fun exercise, hope that helps. Let me know what you think in the community. And now we go to the next steps. And um, yeah, as I, as I also said many times, if you have any questions, you can always ask in the, in the group, right? If the exercise didn't work for you for whatever reason or you felt bad, reach out. But ideally, as I said, you should be feeling really, really good because then you have the right thing. Then you have something that you're really excited about and high belief. And that's something you can actually manifest pretty fast. Then let's talk about my journey to creating a compelling vision. So first, the secret, of course. Maybe some of you also first discovered the secret before anything else. And this is how everything started for me with positive thinking and having a vision, right? Starting to think about what I want. Funny thing is, it didn't really work for me. There are some reasons as well, because the secret doesn't cover everything. There, not everything is covered. Like the things that you're learning here is not covered in the secret, but it's amazing. Even, even if you combine it with this course, if you watch the movie, for example, today or tomorrow, or this week or next week, it's going to just do good for you. It's, it's an amazing movie. The book is also amazing. But yeah, that was my start into creating a compelling vision and start thinking about what I actually want in life. And I think I was 18 or something. Then Sam Owens, my first business mentor, joined his program back in 2018. He's just like incredibly intelligent, such a big thinker. He's very different from, from me. He's very like logical, straightforward. I'm more a creative person, more emotional person. He's more like logical, brain thinking person. But he did something with the vision that I really, really, really found cool. But there were also some things that created too much pressure. So it actually didn't work for me. It was too detailed, too defined. And that's another thing. It's like Abraham Hicks talks about that. If you think you have to have such a detailed vision, every single thing needs to be in numbers and defined. It's not how it works. For some it works, but for some not. Because you just know what you know. Don't try to force yourself to have like, be so clear on all details. If you don't know the details, don't focus on it. Focus on, on what you want, right? So I combine now what I learned from him. I took the best out of it and used it now with all the other things that I learned too. But there were some things that were just too much pressure because I actually felt really weird. I, I could do it like I was excited for one, two, three days. And then I started fo to fall off and feel actually really bad. But as I said, like he is amazing and I learned so much from him and I use now part of what I learned from him for the vision creation. And then life book, my deep dive in creating a compelling vision. And here I learned the real meaning of it. So that was like, I went deep. Life book has given me the tool to really go super, 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 super deep. I don't think it's necessary for everyone. So if you're here, you don't really need to do it. But if you want to go even deeper, you can, if you want, right? I just say like, from my experience, I mean, I needed it at the time. It was perfect, but you're doing this course now. And I also don't want you to get distracted, but it helped me a lot. And I went really deep and I also used part of what I learned there for what I'm doing now. So as I said, with all these things that I learned over the time, I created my own system that works perfectly for me. And what does it mean for me? I'm a creative, more emotional person. So if you're a creative, emotional person, it's very likely that my system works super well for you, but we are also all different, right? So then Kevin Trudeau from two specific goal setting, sometimes also two big goals to finding the balance and understanding feelings that play a big role here. Exactly. Kevin Chido helped me a lot. I think I combined kind of life book with Kevin Chido 
and he helped me a lot to actually realize it's not all about the goals it's not all about being super 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 specific it's yeah you have to be super clear what you want that doesn't mean you need to know exactly like the color of the car how many seats and blah blah, blah. even though there is an advantage of knowing something that clear but maybe you are not there. You cannot force yourself to be that clear. Maybe you just don't care about the color and you just wanna, for you it's more about the feeling, for you it's more about how it feels to sit in it, right? And that also depends on the person you are. And he also always said like the main thing that we actually want is we wanna feel something. So we think that certain goals will make us feel a certain way, that's why we want it. But what we really want, and that's also why we should focus on that, is feeling good. And if we feel good, we will attract exactly that. We will attract our vision, right? So very important. So it helped me to balance it out and start creating this system. And then, yeah, let's get into the before. So there was my vision when I was like in 2020, really, really focused on my art. It was all about that. I was obsessed with it. I got to a certain level, like I sold over 200,000 worth of my art. At one point, I stopped counting, to be honest. In the beginning, I actually counted, which was an, it's an, another amazing tool. If you want to make money with something, start counting how much money comes in. It makes you even more excited and your brain wants to, the number to go up even more. That was an amazing tool that I used. So I had another sheet on, on another thing like this, where I had the number that I, that I had right now, that I hit right now. And I actually calculated how much I make, how much I made so far. And then every time I sold the painting, I went in there and updated it. So that, that's an amazing tool. If you're an artist or if you sell anything, do that, right? It's gonna, it's gonna just create more money. I, I tell you, it worked wonders for me. So that was before. So this is my vision right now. It changed quite a lot because my priorities changed. I had a lot of experiences. I, I, I traveled, then I realized I don't wanna be in Switzerland anymore. And then I realized I love traveling. I wanna do more. There's so many places I wanna go to. And then I started creating this group and so on and so forth. So I want to say with this, we are always changing and evolving. Your vision doesn't stay the same. And some of the things you saw, I already had a Hoyas private collection, collector's group. And then there is also Oliver Hoyas group. So I already played with these ideas and then they started growing and evolving. And now it went towards more towards the groups, having communities and having complete like freedom, being able to travel wherever I want, having beautiful apartment. And your vision will also change over the time because, you know, we live life and we have experiences and some things are, we experience some things that we don't want and they help us clarify even more what we really want, right? So we're always changing and evolving. Don't take like, you know, when you have kind of bad experiences, don't take this as a negative sign. It's contrast. It shows you what you actually want. And that's why it feels bad because you realize this is not what I want. It's all it is. It's not something bad, it's just showing you what you don't want. And then you can clarify even more what you want. So that's how my vision changed. So now, the exciting part, creating your vision. Should we do it? Okay, let's do it. Let's dream together. Creating your vision. First, write out your ideal vision, your ideal day, your ideal life. That's a little bit different than the chief aim, but we, are gonna, we come back to the chief aim and hopefully you wrote it down. Then second, look at your vision and start Googling images based on what you want and add them to your vision board. A vision board is maybe the wrong word here, but you will get a PDF or like a document where you can add all of this and then you can print it out. Third, make sure that you have your chief aim clearly defined on top, on top of your vision. I show you how to do that as well. Fourth, have fun. This is reprogram you, reprogram, this is reprogramming your mind to think about what you want. Okay, so have fun with this. And this is how it looks like. So you have a written form and a visual form, right? The visual form you already saw before. I'm a very visual person. I love to see my vision like this. It gets me excited. But then I also have a written form where I really describe the kind of day that I'm living. So it can be, you know, it can be more, let's say, general, your ideal life, but I created like kind of an ideal day also with some other details that I had in there. So you can read it, you will get the PDF anyways, the document where you can add your own vision and then you can make it your own. You can take some of the things that I'm describing as an inspiration, of course, for yours. But yeah, that's what we're gonna do. And then also focus on your chief aim. So we also have a third one, which is your chief aim, right? And you will also define it. So just do the same. You have your chief aim, you can describe it a little bit more. Then also, what do I give in, re in return? So it's important, that's actually what um, Napoleon Hill described in his book and I think it's amazing 
right? So we'll definitely do that too. Then also by when. And by when, again, usually we don't work so much here with time frames, but the chief aim goes more towards a goal. And there is a difference between a vision and a goal. I tend to work better without a time frame, except sometimes when I get really clear about something and I want to make it happen fast and I believe I can make it happen at that day. Right? So I'm going to probably even change this date that I have on right now, the 2025, because that, in my mind, it's completely doable in that time frame. Maybe it's going to happen even sooner, right? Then, essential reading for your vision. By the way, you will have the document down below. Um, download it after the video and do the same, right? Start writing this all out and just change it to your vision, okay? And then, essential reading for vision creation. To be honest, it's not essential. You don't have to, but it can inspire you. If you feel like very clear on your vision and you're really excited and you're ready to continue, you don't need to read it. If you want more, if you want to dive deeper into the topic, you can. And here are the ones that I recommend. Creative visualization. Use the power of your imagination to create what you want in your life. I think it's a great book. Definitely recommend it. And the vision board. The secret to an ex extraordinary life. And also a happy, a happy pocket full of money. Which is, it goes, this, the happy pocket full of money goes really, really deep. But it's also a very, very good book. Can highly recommend it. And now let's go in ever-changing and evolving. We already talked about this a bit, right? But you have your vision and everything. And what then? So first, change. Change is the only constant. Don't resist it. Sometimes we resist change. But go, go be fluid. You know, like... Bruce Lee said it, be like water. Water is fluid, flexible. And because you, it's with new experiences, you get new knowledge and you get more clear on what you don't want, what you want. And then you get some of these things and then you realize, I want to have rather this or you have it and you're excited and then it goes further, right? You achieve what you want, but now you want to have this. It's all, we are always going to change forever. It's never going to stop, okay? Don't resist change. Then contrast. Everything in your life will help you to clarify even more what you want. That's already what I explained before. It's like contrast is basically seeing in your reality what you don't want. And it makes you feel bad. But don't, you know, don't go into it. See it as a sign of what you don't want. Thank the universe. Thank the universe for showing me what I don't want. Right? And then define what do you want instead and focus on this. Right? And contrast, which is life, because in life you have contrast things that you don't want, experiences that you don't want, use them to clar clarify your vision even more. Inspiration. Don't force it, play with it, what inspires you the most. That's another big one. This should be fun. You have an inner voice, an intuition that is talking to you. It's, it's, I call it like the universe talking through me. And inspiration is something very similar. It is actually the intuition talking to you, right? So you, you need to like, instead of forcing things or thinking you should do something, Go out of this and get more into a playful state. See this as a, as a game. It, it's fun, right? It's not, don't take it too serious. And follow your inspiration. What inspires you the most? What do you really want? It's very important in the law of attraction. You cannot fake it. The law of attraction knows what you really want and what you don't want. The, if you say like, I really want this, but your feelings say something different, you're not going to manifest that. Because what counts is like what you really, really feel. So it's important, follow your inspiration. Don't force it, play with it. Follow your bliss. You can only see as far as you can see. Take one step at a time and you'll see further. That's a very, that's a concept I learned, for, for example, from Bashar and I think other people also said it. Follow your bliss. It can be misunderstood. And I misunderstood it too, but now I understand it more. Your bliss could be called your intuition, your inspiration, your joy, things that you like to do, that you love to do. This is the, this is the language from the universe. Right, And negative things, if you feel bad and you don't want to do it and you feel frustrated, this is also a language of the universe that you're not aligned with who you really are and what you're really here, here for to create. Right, So you're in the wrong direction. That's all it says. It's not that it is bad and you created, yeah, you created it, but it's also a sign that, hey, this is not the right direction for you. Because if it's the right direction, you will feel amazing. And once you are in a really positive and good state, it's easier to acknowledge your, your bliss, your inspiration, your intuition, because it's, it's louder, right? 
So that's why it's also important to bring you, yourself in a very, very good state. And we talk in the power of emotions a lot about these things. So follow your bliss is, is really just like follow what inspires you right now. So also if you don't know your vision fully clearly, and you will see that in my vision, not, not everything is super, super defined. I'm not that person. I have friends that define every single number, like how much weight they are, how much money they have on their bank account, savings. And there's actually something, there is an advantage of doing that. But if it makes you feel bad and stressed out and pressured and it's not funny anymore, it has a negative effect. So then it's not going to do anything good. So, and the bliss is, the, po the point with following your bliss is like, you know what you know. Write down what excites you right now, what you, what you would love to do. You, create a vision that excites you. Right, that you every day when you look at it, you get excited. It gets your juices flowing, and when you're in this state, do f follow your bliss, follow your inspiration, take inspired action. That's another word, okay? And then the vision versus goal setting. Having a vision is not the same as having goals. So we also going to talk about setting specific goals. That's I don't even know if we need that, but eventually we do. I will think about it. Maybe you can also let me know if you think it's essential for you guys to set goals. For me, it's kind of, kind of easy or naturally, because if I have a vision, then I know exactly what to do. But it can help because it gives, me, gives you more direction of what to do next, right? But a vision is something bigger that inspires you, that excites you. And goals brings it from this vision, this dream, into reality in a way of like, okay, that's what I'm going to do. Like step one, step three, step four, step five. But it's, it's not the same, okay? Important to understand. Summary. Your compass. Have a vision that pulls you forward and makes you jump out of bed each morning. That's the purpose of this vision. It's your compass and it should make you feel amazing because it's your life. Nobody else's life. Your life. Then doubt. How doubt arises and how to stop it. We covered it, right? It usually comes from not believing in what you set yourself as a, as a goal. So the vision should not bring up much doubt because it's a bigger vision without a time frame really. Like to be honest, my vision is about two years maybe. So maybe longer, I don't know, but around two years. Because I think if you have a vision that's like 10 years, it's probably too big. You know, it's like so far away that you cannot even get excited about it, right? So my vision is kind of two years, but I don't define it like this has to happen all of it in two years. Now, I let it also up to the universe to give me all of this in the right time because the, the universe knows better when we are ready for something. And usually we're ready when we're aligned emotionally 100% with this vision. Okay? And also, if you think about the how a lot, it's basically doubt. You doubt that you can get it. Ever changing. You're never done refining your vision. Make it part of your life. Yeah, make this a part of your life. You have your vision and you keep refining it. Best is if you go back to it every day. Maybe later on you go every week, but you keep refining your vision. Don't stop it completely. It happened to me many times in my life that I left it completely, and but then usually my life went down. <laughs> and then I came back to it and started redefining it, and I felt way, 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 way better. So you're always changing. And then reprogram your mind, Repro reprogram your mind to think about what you want. So that's also what we are doing. We just reprogram your mind to think about what you want instead of thinking about what you don't want, what's not going well, what, what, you, know, what you want to have differently. So it's no thinking about what you want with excitement, with you know, inspiration. So this is going to do a big impact on you and your life already now because you're thinking, you're setting powerful energies, emotions by thinking about what you want, especially so deeply if you do all of these exercises. And then time frame, you don't need a specific time frame for your vision, yet your goal should have a time frame. That's something different. We're going to talk about that probably more in the future, but your goals are something with a time frame. But also there you need to set a time frame. You can actually believe you can get it, but the vision doesn't need to have a time frame. I still recommend you to don't, don't put it out in 10 years because maybe then you have like a house for 10 million, maybe you have a car for 5 million, I don't know. But if this is what inspires you and if it makes you excited, then do it. You can also try it out and then see if you are still excited or if you feel bad on one point. If you feel bad looking at your vision, it's doubt. It's too big probably, right? And yeah, leave a testimonial, testimonial at manifestingdreams.com and win special prizes, okay? It's not up yet, but it will be soon. You can already test it out and see for yourself if it's up or not. And then a great quote. 
When you have a vision that is strong enough and powerful enough, nothing can stand in your way. Louis Hose. Beautiful quote. He's very, very successful. He has a like, super famous and successful podcast, achieved many great things, and it's really true. If you have a vision that is so exciting, that makes you jump out of bed for excitement and you look forward to work on it and, and you, you get excited about life and see what happens and what comes your way and the opportunities that present itself, life becomes amazing and you, have, you, you unleash so much power in yourself as well because we are meant to be creators. This is our destiny. We are creators and we feel bad if we forget this truth. And we just like live in the day and we don't have a vision and we're complaining about people, our work, our boss. That's, that, that's why we feel bad because we are not supposed to be victims. We are victims. We are creators, right? So yeah, now let's get to work. I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know your feedback. It's very exciting for me too. I also refine my vision thanks to that. So now it's also super clear and I love to refine my vision because it's just fun to do and it really brings in... it. it puts your mind in the, di the right direction again. So anyways, let's go, let's get to work. And if you have questions, you know where you can find me. Peace. Hey guys, super excited about this video. Become your own hero. That's gonna be super exciting. So much to cover and some really, really cool exercises. So you can be, yeah, you can be fired up for this video today, okay? So let's jump right into it. Here's what we're going to cover. First, the danger of dreaming big, yeah. Dreaming big is not always the best, but we will cover that. Then also the achievement board, that's the exercise. Success builds confidence, we are going to talk more about that. The success char and self-love. So follow me on YouTube, Instagram and Facebook for exclusive content. Soon I will start releasing more content about the law of attraction, manifesting your dreams, success and stuff like that. The links are below, share this course and let's change people's lives together. Warning, this is the most important video in the whole course, so you know, watch the whole video, don't skip, don't fast forward. But of course, it's okay to watch it in double speed or 1.5 speed, if this is, if you still can concentrate. So, let's talk about the danger of dreaming big. What does this mean? First of all, self-sabotage. Sometimes it can be self-sabotage not, not to get going or to be negative. So sometimes we have such a big dream, we get paralyzed and we cannot move, right? Because it's just so big, we don't know where to start. And also, it can be actually um, hiding, like this dreaming big can be hiding self-sabotage, right? It seems like you're on the right path, it seems like you're focusing on what you want, it seems like you use the law of attraction, but what you're actually doing is you're, you're sabotaging you, yourself and your success. It's really important because we all do that from time to time, right? That's one danger. And I can also tell you why. Because if something is too big that you cannot even believe in, you, you have no idea how to get there, it can cause negative feelings. And what will you attract then? You will attract more negative things in your life. Then belief. Do you actually believe you can get it? Set yourself up to win. So we talked about this a lot and repetition is key because that's... That's why I repeat these things, because you have to really understand it. You cannot attract anything in your life if you don't believe you can get it. This is the law of attraction. It says you need to feel as if you already have it. How do you feel like this if you doubt to, to get it, right? If you have doubt, you're not in the right state. You attract more doubt and you attract more negativity. So you, you like believing in a dream, believing in a goal you have, in a, something you want is an absolute must. Without it, you won't achieve it. It's just like, if you can get yourself to believe it, great. So you have to get in the state of believing. Better than believing is actually feeling like you already have it. So there's zero doubt. There's not even like, you don't even need to try to make yourself believe that you can get it. You are, you feel as if you already have it. Because that's the law of attraction. Then you're in the frequency and you're a match to what you want, right? So set yourself up to win. Think about things and dreams that you can actually believe you can get. And that's also a process. First, you look at something, you start you know, getting in the state, you start believing it, you start to see possibilities, and on one point, you feel like you already have it. Never enough. If your goals are too big, you can lose gratitude and actually feel like you're not enough now. 
And that's another thing. Yeah, you can if you focus too much on big goals and you know wanting things and you know having this house and that, it can just make you feel like you're not enough. It makes you feel like you need all these things in order to feel good. But that's not the truth. That's never the case, right? But that's one danger that can happen if you dream too big. Then how do you feel when you focus on this goal or dream? How does it make you feel? That comes back to the belief, right? How does it make you feel? Because if it makes you feel bad, stop thinking about it. Because that's the, it's not the right goal. It's too big. You don't believe you can get it. And it's completely fine. You can always come back. And we, we're going to talk about success builds confidence. So the more successes you celebrate and acknowledge and see and more things you manifest, the more confident you get in actually, you know, achieving and manifesting bigger things. So, you know, don't rush the process, okay? Then time frame. The time frame you have to achieve this goal or dream will influence a lot on how you feel, right? Yeah. So, for example, if you have a big goal, a big dream, Let's say you want to buy a house for five million, but right now you're completely in debt And you say you want to do that in a year So first of all, there are some people that would believe that but you have to be honest to yourself and Really ask yourself. Do I really believe I can get that because you don't want to feel pressure You don't don't want to come you don't want doubt to come up because it's not gonna You know put the law of attraction in your favor Actually creates the opposite of you want of what you want right so if but if you say if you have a big dream and you say 10 years it doesn't matter for me when five ten years you can do that you know th- th- there it has its, its purpose but you still want to rather focus this is more like dream building you inspire yourself you look at possibilities you, you open up your mind you expand your mind but at the same time you still want to focus mainly on things that you can see happening soon right because otherwise it's 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 too far out it's more like an inspiration, as I said, to expand your mind, right? To see what, what other possibilities are out there. But it's not something you should be focusing on. You should focus on something that you can see happen pretty soon. The sweet spot. The best goal is the one that stretches you but doesn't scare you. Meaning you believe you can get it and you have a high desire to achieve it. That also means like, what does it mean, what does it, mean it stretches you but it doesn't scare you? If it scares you, it's again too big. If it stretches you, it's like, oh wow. It's normal because you don't have it yet, right? Like everything in your life you don't have. I I mean, everything in your life that you want to achieve, you don't have it yet, right? So of course, it's going to take different ways of thinking, feeling, and doing things, right? So it will be out of your comfort zone, which is completely fine. So that's why it would stretch you. But if it scares you, it's too big. Again, we talked a lot about the sweet spot. Check out the five days Manifest your dreams challenge because I'm helping you there define the sweet spot like what's the goal you should be focusing on And also of course in this course we talked about that So yeah, that's the sweet spot Then the solution what's the solution if you're thinking about things that make you feel bad and your dreams seem too big and unattainable and Lots of self-doubt and criticism comes up. What's the solution? Let's talk about it the achievement board so these are my, I have two actually, you can do more if you want to. Um, I just got really excited because I had a big part of my life focus on art, right? And I've sold so many paintings, like I couldn't even fit all the paintings on here. So it just took the recent ones and all my collectors from before. But I, yeah, as I said, I have way more pictures. But there is one specifically for me as like what I've, achi- what I've achieved as an artist, how many paintings I've sold for several thousands. As you know, I sold one for 24K. That's amazing, right? Sometimes I forget. And so I have to remind myself. And then the second one is more focused on what I'm doing right now. And the the achievements I have right now, like having my dream relationship with this beautiful girl, became a model, dream physique, traveling the world, having an Instagram reel that went viral, which I thought will be hard to achieve. And I put my 24K painting there again, because it's, it's my favorite painting. And the painting I made for John Butcher. So anyways, it's just like, you know, the lifestyle I could create for myself, the freedom I've created. Because sometimes when you think about things you want, you forget how far you already came and you start feeling not good enough. You start doubting yourself. But so you have to remind yourself how powerful you are and how much you already achieved. That's why the achievement board is so powerful. And that's the solution, right? That's also balancing out all your wishes and your wants with who you are and what you've achieved. So that's basically why I said becoming your own hero like see look at your life look at yourself like what things have you overcome which obstacles 
did you have all common? What things did you achieve? And it doesn't matter how small it is. And it also has to do with gra gratitude, being grateful what life have, has given you and seeing the power you have, like the creator you are. So let's talk a bit more about that. So it's basically a positive feedback loop, right? You get what you focus on. So focus on your successes now. It's 100% true. You cannot achieve anything that you want, anything worthwhile, anything that's important to you, to you while you don't feel successful. Because again, that's the law of attraction. You attract what you focus on. You attract, you or you are, you you get what you, what you are. That's not a word to say. It. I was just thinking about it. Um, so you have to feel successful now, right? Otherwise, it's not gonna work. Like attracts like. And of course, you will think about more successes. That's another thing. So let's talk about that again. You will attract more successes in your life. Like the first thing that you attract, actually, in the law of attraction, when when you think about something. If you think about successes, you start thinking about more of your successes, right? So that's always the first thing, like the law of attraction, manifesting something, attracting something works immediately. It first, you first actually attract more like-minded thoughts. And then, you know, more, the more you go into these thoughts and it starts to manifest actually in your feelings, like how you feel. And then the stronger it becomes, then you start slowly to attract it in your reality, right? But yeah, it's a positive feedback loop, loop. And then you will remember more successes. So even if you think about doing this exercise now, we will do it after the, the video. Maybe you think like, oh, I don't really know what I, I achieved. Nothing comes to my mind. You know, it, it takes, you have to make the first step. You have to think about a few things. But when you start it, if you do this just for one, two minutes, the more successes will come into your mind. So very powerful encouragement whenever you feel down check your achievements so whenever you feel down for whatever reason come back and see what you already achieved right whenever you doubt yourself it's also like when you want to manifest bigger things look at what you already did remind yourself success builds confidence become more confident in your ability to achieve whatever you want yeah it's really really true success builds confidence and what we need in order to achieve bigger things is like confidence you need to be confident in your ability that you actually can achieve stuff and we're going to talk more about success builds confidence now oh yeah this one is a good one um, my camera is there but anyways you don't have to be rich in order to be happy but you have to be happy in order to be rich so again you have to embody what you want to be first you don't have to get there and then you feel that way? No, you have to feel that way right now and then you will get there. Reality will catch up with you. So success builds confidence. Let's talk about it more in detail. First, you are the hero. It's great to have role models, but you can create the person that is your biggest role model. I don't know if I wrote this right, but we are here very authentic and raw, so let's just keep it. You are your hero, right? So. If you, have, if, if, if you always look at other people, you put them on a pedestal and it's great to have other people that inspire you. But you can create a person that is your biggest role model. That's the beauty of this life. You're a creator. You create, can create the character that you are proud of, that you want to be the role model you were always wishing for, the hero that you were always wishing for. And then also momentum. The more you think about what you already achieved, the easier it becomes to believe in your dreams. We talked about that already, right? It builds momentum. In the beginning, it's hard to think about these things, but the more you think about what you've achieved, the more successes you attract, and the easier it becomes for you to believe that you can achieve whatever you want, right? And then suddenly, all dreams don't seem big for you anymore, and you actually believe you can get them. And embody success. You get more of what you focus on. You can, you can achieve success by not feeling already successful. Again, yeah, it's really true. People think, first I have to get there and then I feel that way. No, you have to feel that way right now and then you will get there. Reality will catch up with you eventually, right? If you stay on track. The success chart, this is a powerful exercise. This is like, you have the achievement board, board but then you also has, have the success chart. And the success chart is more about small things as well. Why the success chart? Celebrating successes which builds confidence and makes you the hero of your journey, yeah. So what you do is actually you have you celebrate all the success sex you celebrate all the successes right every small thing that you've achieved and you make it a habit whenever you you 
did something, you got something done or you something happened or you even like maybe you approached a person you were afraid of approaching, maybe you overcame something, it's just like small things, whatever it is. Or you, you got extra money in, you just put it in there. And that makes you again feel feel amazing and focus on more successes and makes you feel successful now, which is the key. So the chart, yeah, first get a chart and write on it, success chart, you can be creative, you can make it really nice. I actually have like a chart here, which I put my lemon juice in, but that, that could be something, for example, that you can put in, uh, put on here, success chart, and make it nice, make it look nice if you want to. And then the method is every time you achieve something, write it on a note and put it in. Like how, no matter how small it is, whatever you, you've done, you, you face the fear, you've got something done. You, as I said, you approached someone and you joined a gym, you, you ate more healthy, whatever it is, you put it in there. And then on one point you will see it filling up, right? And then build the habit. Once a month, take out the notes and read it. So every day you wanna think about, like because you will become more aware. You will focus more on success and you will feel more successful, right? It starts building the momentum in the beginning. You don't even think about successes because we are so trained to think about negative things about ourselves, like to be very critical and beat ourselves up and be kind of harsh on ourselves. But I want you to do the opposite, like focus on what you already achieved, feeling successful now. And then once a month you take the notes out and you read them, okay? Now talk about self-love, very, very important. So first, compassion, don't be so hard on yourself, exactly. It's like, if you're hard on yourself, it's very hard to make the law of attraction work because every time you will, you will basically pull yourself down. You're, you're, you are your own villain instead of your own hero. Your hero will pull you up, your hero will be compassionate about you and would be, you know, like when you do a mistake or whatever, it would be compassionate, it wouldn't beat yourself up. Or, yeah, you know what I mean. And then also forgiveness. It's really difficult to get the law of attraction on your side if you hold on to any past mistakes. It's very true. If you dwell in the past and what you've done wrong and what hasn't happened and what you've, you know, did not well enough, made some mistakes or blah, 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 said something wrong, it will be hard to feel good now. So it's very important to be forgiving to yourself. Also on a daily basis, you know, you can do forgiveness exercises as we talked in other videos but you can also make it a habit, right? Make it a habit to forgive yourself. Whenever you realize you made a small mistake, you said something wrong, say, hey, I forgive yourself. You know, like be the hero, talk to, to yourself as your own hero. How would your hero talk to you? As I said, your hero would be compassionate. Your hero would say like, hey, it's okay, we are all human. We all make mistakes. You're on your journey, you're doing well, right? And then also daily self-care. Start doing things that make you feel better. Take care of yourself. We're gonna talk about this more in the power of emotion in week two, because the whole thing is about feeling good now, right? That's what makes the law of attraction work. So I wanna give you like some lots, lots of different tools, like specific things you can do to feel amazing, to feel better and better and better and better, so that you attract more good things. And on one point you feel so amazingly good that you feel like you can achieve literally anything but you can already start now, right? Start doing things that make you feel better. Be, take care of yourself, very important. Then also cultivating gratitude. Be grateful for who you are and how far you've come. The achievement board helps you. So what you can do when, once you've done the achievement board, also achievement board, look at it and thank yourself for everything you've done, right? Look at it and thank yourself. Thank, give thanks to everything in your life. The small wins you put in your jar, right very important and then reflecting on your journey look at your achievement board on a daily basis and use the success chore very important because that's also a, like a, a way of loving yourself being kind to yourself making yourself feel better summary so that was kind of a short video let's go to the summary you are the hero you are the hero you were always looking for dreaming big why dreaming big isn't always the best method to, to getting what you want we talked about this in depth right the achievement board and success chart. Implement these two things right after this video. That's very important. I put the link for the achie achievement board down below and you just download the file and you fill it out. You start looking at pictures. And by the way, the best way to do that is 
if you're an artist like I did, I posted my soul paintings on Facebook or Instagram. So I w just went there, made screenshots. Um, I looked at my travel pictures. I looked at my, I just looked at my phone basically. And s I've seen, you know, the, my milestones, things I've done that I always wanted to do because usually we take photos. If you don't have photos, you, you can be creative, right? Maybe you have to rather write it out. And that's anyways, I recommend you to first write out, write out your successes on a Google Doc or something or even on a piece of paper. And then you start looking for pictures. That's a better way to do it because then you're, you, you don't forget. You know, you can always look back, oh, what pictures am I looking for? Look at your list and then you see it. And then whatever it is, and if you don't find pictures, put it, I would definitely recommend put pictures on your achievement board because it makes it visual and fun. If you cannot find many pictures, just write it in words, like sold a painting for 10K or uh, quit my job and did this, uh, planted my own garden, then take a picture of your garden, right? Uh, having a wonderful relationship, put you and your partner, um, being in great health, put a green smoothie. Um, yeah, you, know, you get the point, right? And then also success builds confidence. We talked about this a lot. Feel successful now and you'll attract more success. Very, very important key concept. Then self-love. It's very hard to make the law of attraction work in your advantage if you don't love yourself, if you don't love and take care of your well-being. Yeah, very, very important, okay? That's basically it. Leave a testimonial at manifestingdreams.com to win special prizes. And also, let's finish with a quote. The more you praise and celebrate your life, the more there is in life to celebrate. Powerful quote. Because it's so true. You get more of what you focus on. That's why it's so important to look at things you have already achieved. Celebrate yourself, right? Celebrate your wins, your successes. Be thankful for them. Give thanks to the universe for all the experience you've had so far. Look, look at your achievement board on a daily basis because the thing is with achievement board, it's very hard to feel bad because it's not in the future. You've done it. You've achieved it, right? But with things in the future, we sometimes can feel bad. We can, self-doubt can come in, right? Because it can also be in, in moments when you feel bad that, you know, maybe when you created your vision board, you, feel re you felt really, really good. But then in moments when you don't feel so good, you look at it and you feel really bad because you don't feel strength. You don't feel powerful right? because right now you don't feel so good. So another thing to, just a side note, another thing to raise belief is actually by feeling better. Because the better you feel, the more you believe you can achieve. But it's like we know the more energy we have, the better we feel, the more we get done, the more we can do, the more people we can meet, the better contacts we can make, the, the better actions we take. It's very normal, right? So yeah. And now let's get to work. Your exercise for today after this video is fill out the achievement board. Take your time, maybe an hour, however long you want to do that. I took quite a while to do that because it's also so much fun. Write down all the things you've achieved and then start putting pictures in. And the file is below and then also start setting up your success chart and start you know, building the habit, okay? Because if you do it, it's gonna be so powerful. But it's like, we are going to do so many things here that are more, we, we, I wanna empower you, I wanna make you feel so good that you believe you can achieve anything. And then you don't worry about the how so much anymore. You don't worry about the strategies anymore. You're not going to out there and buying tons of different programs where they promise you they give you the best strategy because today there's something we call the shiny object syndrome. And there are amazing marketers out there that sell you the how because that's what you're looking for. You think the how is your answer. And don't misunderstand me. The how, you know, the how comes to you. There will be a how and it will come in time. But it can only, the, the right how can only come if you feel amazing and you're completely aligned with what you want, right? But when you feel not good and you're doubting yourself, you're going to spend a lot of money on strategies that, not, that don't really work for you because you're not aligned, right? You're not feeling amazing. You don't feel successful. You cannot really believe that you achieve your dream, right? And another thing to finish it up, success, uh, no, clarity is prosperity. So if you still feel like you're not fully clear on your vision, go back to the video and do it again because it's very, clear, it's very important that you find a clear vision that you can believe in. And that's also why we talk a lot about the sweet spot, something you can see, something you are excited about. And being clear on a vision can just be like more the feelings, like how you want to feel if you have it, the, like the travels you will do, whatever. But then, you know, 
Go into it. See it every day. Feel amazing when you think about it. Anyways, that's enough for now. I hope this video inspires you. It helps you. Leave feedback in the community. Write a comment. Like, you know, share your experience. Share how you like this video. And we'll see each other in the next video. Peace. Hey guys, welcome to another video, the last video of week one. So I'm really excited about that because after that you have an amazing, let's say, document that will help you to create everything and anything you want. It's going to be so powerful. And then I'll also tell you the next step. But yeah, so what will we cover today in Rewrite Your Story? Let's check it out. First, take control. Second, your personal transformation. And lastly, become who you meant to be. This is going to be the icing on the cake, like you say. So follow me on YouTube, Instagram and Facebook for exclusive content. Links are below. Share this course and let's change people's life together. Warning, this is the most important video in the whole course. So watch the whole video. Don't skip. Don't fast forward. And pro tip, if you want to be fast, you can watch it double speed. So take control. What is this about exactly? So first, your past. Our memory isn't 100% correct. We don't remember things as they were, but as we experienced and interpreted them, right? We basically create the meaning of our past. That's, for some of you, might be a new concept, but I really heard that our memory is flawed. So sometimes we think about our past and it brings up a lot of negativity, a lot of bad feelings. And what we do with that is like, actually we're just creating more of these things. And there is even a concept from Neville Goddard. I think, I'm not sure if I say it right. But his concept is that you can rewrite your past. So you can actually go back into the past. And whatever memories come up to you, the memories that are very, very strong, go back there and imagine it as you wanted it to be. So for example, if you went somewhere and you said something wrong or later on you were thinking I could have said that or I could have done that or I should have st stood up for myself or whatever it is go back in your mind and start playing the past that you anyways play so sin since our memory is hun isn't 100% correct you're creating actually a bad outcome from your past which creates your future because time doesn't exist time is just like a concept in our mind right so the past is happening right now so thinking about your past, especially if it's negative, it's creating our future and it's creating what you don't want. And many people struggle with that, right? They think about the past and bad memories come up. That's what they struggle with. And they think they have to, you know, somehow heal the traumas and so on and so forth. And don't understand me wrong, these things can help. But what it basically is, it's just like a bowl of negativity that you have nurtured over time that became really, really big, right? How you can change it is like as we do in this course, in the whole course, we are talking about basically making the negative pole smaller and creating a bigger positive pole. Because once the positive pole is bigger, you're going to be happier and you're going to attract more amazing things. And you can also attract and create more things. You can set bigger goals because now that you are just more positive, you have a more positive outlook on life. It's easier for you to imagine and believe that you can achieve amazing things, right? But with a big negative ball, it's really hard to do that. So back to the past, like you can actually go back with certain stories in your mind. You can go back and imagine it as you wanted it to be and stop playing that in your mind. It sounds a bit odd because it was odd for me too. I'm like, how can you change the past? But the point is that past doesn't exist. It happened back then. And now your mind created a story which you keep replaying, which creates how you feel right now and creates therefore also your future, right? So let me know in the comments if that makes sense for you, if you want to know more about that concept. But yeah, our memory is flawed. It's not 100% correct. Always remember that, right? It's like you, you also based on how you feel right now, like if you feel negative and you feel frustrated you will remember your past more negative because thought attracts thought right so whatever thought you have you will attract like thoughts similar thoughts so if you feel bad you will look into the past and get more bad memories if you feel really 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 good you look into the past and you have more positive memories that come up 
your present. This is where you have 100% control and creating your future. And as I said, your past is also happening right now. Whenever, I mean, if you're thinking about your past, it's happening now, right? Because the past, when it happened, these memories, they were happening in the now. But thinking about your past is, again, it's you do it now, basically, right? So in your presence, in the present moment, you have control over everything. You have control over like how you think, feel, and act. And these are, these are actually the only three things you have control over. You don't have control over what happened in the past, but you have control over how you think about it, how you see your past, past right? So, and then also, you, have, you cannot, you know, jump into the future and, you know, change the future, but you can create the future by how you think about your future and how you visualize it, right? And how you, like, you, you have control over what's happening right now. And then also that your future, f uh, fear and worry is, ne is negative goal setting. Decide how you want your future to be. So again, your, your future, sometimes we think about something that might happen in the future or we worry about something or, or even worry about the other person or what they're going to do or not going to do or we fear something. This is all literally negative goal setting because again, it's not happening, it's happening only in your mind and you have full control over your mind. You have 100% complete control over your mind. You have no control over what happens in the future. I mean, you can influence it, but you cannot decide, right? There is control is, is also, it can be, how should I say? It's, um, I don't have the word. It's kind of like a lie, you know, like you, the only thing you have control over, as I said, and I'll come back to this again and again, is how you think, feel and act in the now, right? So you don't have any control what people did in the past and how you handled it in the past and what you did and didn't do and what this person did or didn't do. No control over that, but you have control over how you see it, how you look into the past, what you make out of it, right? Because you can also tell a different story. You can literally say to yourself, like, oh, this happened to me, I'm so, so poor, I'm a victim. Or you can say, this happened to me because of a reason. And it happened to me because of that and that and that. Because I needed that to learn this lesson, whatever. Like, you can tell the story how you want it to be. And literally go back in the past and change your memory t memories. Because your brain doesn't know the difference of something you imagine and something that's actually happening. That's the power of our mind, right? And fear and worry is just like literally negative goal setting because it's not happening, has nothing to do with the reality. It's just like using your mind for negative goal setting to think about things you don't want. So fear and worry has no purpose whatsoever. And the more you do this course, the more you start putting, putting these things into practice, the more you start to realize that fear and worry is not something that controls you. It's something that you control. It's like you decide if you are going to fear something or worry about something. You literally can stop it. You can just stop it or put down the volume. And in the beginning, it might be harder because, again, you have a big negative bowl of energy that took a lot of momentum. So it's very easy and it's almost like it's pulling you into negativity and fear and worry and self-doubt. Right? So that's why it takes a little bit doubt. Uh, <laughs> that's why it takes a little bit of time to start making this you know, diminishing this negative ball and start creating this positive ball. But once you're there, it's going to be easier and easier and easier. So the better you feel, the easier it is to think positively about your past, about your future, to, you know, not let fear and worry come in anymore. And also when you are triggered about something, it's easier to not be reactive. So that's why your main job, and I will say this for the whole course, is feeling good now feeling better and better every day. That's what you really want to do. Because then everything is going to be easy. It's easier to manifest. It's easier to set goals and stuff like that. So let's move on. You don't have control. Exactly. We talked about that. You don't have control over, over other people and things that happen in your life. But you do have control over your thoughts, feelings and actions. So how you can decide how you perceive something, how you interpret something. If something happened to you that you didn't expect. Because again, you don't have control over everything. You can set goals and visualize and dream but how it comes you have zero control it's a universe's job to give it to you and you don't know how right so there is a kind of you need to also have a flow you cannot just be like always in control and think it happens the way you want or think it should happen no it doesn't 
right? You use your brain, your creativity to create things, but how they come in, that's not up to you, right? So that's also why you need to actually let go of trying to control the outside and rather focus on controlling yourself, which is your thoughts, feelings, and actions. Just that. That's literally it. If you just focus on that. And if you know that, stop obsessing or getting angry or worry about things that you literally cannot control because there is no purpose for it. Okay, so, yeah. So, let's go on. I think that was important to say because it's uh, kind of a chapter around self-responsibility and this word control is you do have control over these three things that I always say thoughts feelings and actions but the rest you literally have no control and the more you realize that the easier life becomes because you can also flow and you know that you just have to focus on your thoughts feelings and actions and by the way your actions are like a result of your thoughts and feelings Right? So even that is something. You don't have to control your decisions. People say, you know, the life is a sum of your decisions. Yeah, but what, is, what are your decisions? Your decisions are a sum of your thoughts and feelings. So that's what you really want to focus on. Your personal transformation, let's talk about that. First, past, right? We talked about the past and then the present. We talked about changing the past the way you wanted it to be, right? Tell a new story. So this is my story that I created. I could have, you know, like, this is actually a, f uh, a funny thing because like there, there could be, I mean, I had a brother, right? And he grew up kind of in the same household, but he became a completely different person. First of all, we are all individual, but the point is like you, two people could grow up in the exact same environment but become completely different people because they give different meaning to what happened to them, right? So this is what happened to me and I gave it a meaning. I made it an empowering and powerful story. And I'm actually so excited about the bad things that happened to me because I know it will make my story so much more powerful, emotional, exciting, inspiring, and that's what I want, right? So grow I grew up in a boarding school, as you know, then I fast forward, so I just you know put the main things in here. And by the way, you are gonna do that too. So I want to explain like my story and how I did it, and then you are gonna do the same thing for your story. But yeah, I grew up in a boarding school. Then fast forward, I was find, finding myself working in different part-time jobs, construction, Burger King stuff like this. Then I wanted to do my first business. I had finally you know the courage to do something, to quit my job, and yeah, to to find this freedom that I always wanted. But it failed, right? My first fa failed business was the photo photography business. I actually, I actually started several businesses that failed. So it was quite a harsh time. <clears throat> but this one I was really passionate about. And I thought it would work. Then I started painting in 2017, quit my job in 2020. So three years later, already was able to quit my job. Sold the painting for 24K. That also happened in 2020. And then all together, I sold around like 200,000 worth of my art featured in se several newspaper, over 3.2 million views on Insta, manifested my dream girl, became a model, and started my school community. So you see, from past, that's like all the way, like from some failures, bad things, that I rewrote, you know, to make my story more powerful, inspiring, right? Because a story is only, like the hero's journey, for example, it's only inspiring if there is some kind of setback, something that you know he needs to overcome and then he has a transformation and you can literally make your life like this too so from the past sort of painting um, so basically the first three ones are kind of negative you 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 are free to do however you want to do this and then i started painting and then the successes came and then into the present moment right then it came like so from past some failures to what started happening in my life to the present moment and as I said you can do it however you want to do it and um, and that's just why you did the achievement board by the way so you have a lot of achievements already hopefully you did it if you haven't done it go back and do it it's really important but you have already a lot of achievements so to do this is going to be actually super easy for you and then also on top you see that I wrote my story out a little bit just to describe what happened there and then from the past Right, we go from the past to present, then into the future. That's the third step. 
past, present and future. And this is the future. 1,000 members in my free community, 100 paid members in my premium group, travel to Italy, Greece and Spain. Like this is in Greece, Santorini. It's so beautiful. I want to, I have like such a desire again to, to travel. And then move with my girlfriend to our dream apartment somewhere on the sea. Not sure yet where exactly. But you see how it looks like. It looks just incredibly beautiful. Then monk mode and dream office. So monk mode means for me I'm like so focused. I have my dream office where I'm like inspired. It's very bright. And I have like lots of amazing equipment for my courses and to record things. And then partnerships that bring in 30,000 a month. So also because I know you cannot do everything on your own, right? So I want to also form powerful partnerships that make me money actually on autopilot or almost autopilot, right? And then financial freedom, just pick the number and the first million is kind of like a milestone. So I put it there and then new chapters coming soon, right? So you can do that too. You go from past to present to future. You tell, you rewrite your story. And then let's talk about what that will do. So you do this whole thing in the end. We are going to actually do something together. Um, I think we, are, we should do this now. Let's do this right now. So yeah, let's go out of here. So you should have the, these documents for all, already for the other things that you filled out for the vision and achievement board. And now this is the last one. And then you can put it all together. I will show you how this looks like in the end. One tip is you can take this one to make it nicer if you want to make it really like nice and everything is the same size you copy that and then you just delete each of them and put in this one so put in this one and then let's say you want to have this picture then you just take the picture and put it in here so and then you can adjust it you make it smaller so it fits right let's say like this put i mean that's for the mac to be honest i don't know exactly how it looks for the pc but probably similar and then you can leave it like this if you want to or you can do it like this i kind of liked it like this yeah so you can also use something else if you want this also kind of looks cool or you just keep it simple as you like so you do that and you do you fill out everything also this use mine as an inspiration and then write your own thing with the pictures this too with the future like what's going to happen so you also you are creating the future right and then this is something we do together so this needs to be more described so let's go back to the slide Become who you meant to be. So first, create your new, new char character. Describe the values, beliefs and habits of this person. So that's what we are going to do. Then words are powerful. How does this person think and talk? Word, words show you where you're at and help focus. So that's also a powerful concept. Because if you think of a thought, is a manifestation of your vibration. Your words are a step further it's already like you are further in the manifestation process right because in the beginning you might think about something and a thought in itself is not the powerful it becomes powerful when it starts to manifest and it becomes like even a word from a thought to a word so saying things puts it more into into your reality right so it, if if you become more aware of the things you're saying you know where you're at and at the same time, you can also use words consciously to focus, to create what you want, right? You can say things like also affirmations are words that help you, words that help you focus and create what you want. So we're also going to do something about that. Then feel, how does this person feel on a daily basis? And I put the 80-20 principle because, you know, feeling good doesn't mean you're never going to feel bad. You're going to feel bad, but also you need to get better in when you feel bad to not make a big story out of it, to get out of it as soon as possible, right? And here the goal is to have an 80-20 rule, which is meaning, which means like f feeling good 80% of the time. If you do that, you're doing amazing. There is no perfection. You can never feel 100% good all the time. 
I mean, maybe there is someone, but I don't know this person. Otherwise, I think 80-20 is perfect. Feeling 80% of the time really, really good and 20% of the time you might feel bad. Just know you're doing amazing. And then be calm. Be this person now. Know when you achieve it, but now. Because the law of attraction says you need to become it first before you get it. You have to become a vibrational match to what you want. Very important, right? So you need to become a match to what you want. You need to be what you want, right? You cannot have it if you're not in this vibrational frequency. Because like attracts like. You only attract what you are. Okay, so let's get to it. We're going to do this now together and then we go to the summary. So this is the sheet. Now we can do this. We can do it together. I think I actually will pause. Um, I will start it, then I pause it, finish it, and you do it in the meantime. So you also pause the video and then do your own thing. Fill out the whole thing and then come back to the video. I think it's better like this so we can make sure you really get it done. So what kind of life is Oliver Hoyos living? Of course, you put your name in there. So you already should have a written vision. So you can just, if you want, you can copy paste some things. You can rewrite it again. Who is Oliver Hoyer? So here we focus more on values, belief, beliefs and habits. How does Oliver Hoyer think and talk? Put this like this. How does Oliver feel on a daily basis? What kind of life is Oliver Hoyer living? So you basically um, make a summary of your vision, right? Oliver Hoyers is living an incredibly abundant life full of joy, love, happiness and riches. He's living living the dream traveling the world having complete financial freedom and the most beautiful relationship so yeah that's uh, like a short one it's basically like the most important things, right? What's the most important thing, the summary of your vision? What kind of life is he living? Does it need to be long because you already have your long vision, right? And here you describe who Oliver is. So, or like you, who you are, right? This character. He's an amazing, inspiring person, changing people's life. He's super confident. Confident, kind, and giving. He's super, super rich. Yeah, he's super rich, and he, because of that, he can do have, be, do, and have whatever he wants. He wants. He's also a giver because he knows the law of giving well, you you get what you give and he's giving abundantly also receiving abundantly yeah so and uh, I could, you know, like also another a note, side note is you don't want to do this perfect. You just start it. Perfection is anyways. I'm long done with perfection. I was a big perfectionist. But now I notice because again, like thought attracts thought, right? If you have a thought, you will attract more like-minded thoughts. And that's the same here. Just start it because when you start it, then you will get more ideas of what to write and it's going to be easier. But you have to start in the beginning, you feel like you don't know what to write, but just write anything, just write anything. And then it starts producing more thoughts and ideas. So now we write down the values. Freedom, give, giving, love, passion, um, 
freedom, giving love, passion, abundance, and joy. Mm, what else? Discipline, discipline, achievement, achievement, achievements. Yeah, exactly. Like, I don't want to make it perfect. I just started for you to give you an example. And also me, also myself, I will come back to this and adjust it because the idea is also to look at it every day. And then we go with beliefs. Here you want to really describe what do you believe? Like, not you, but this person that you're creating, right? Your future self. So everything always works out for me. I live in a universe that wants nothing more than to support me. That's from my mentor, early mentor Mahima, that uh, she always said that and it became really a second nature for me. Works work out for me. Um, I am amazing. There is more than the world the world is an abundant place hopefully you're also filling it out because I mean you can you know fill it out literally with me right maybe it also helps you and give, gives you some inspiration I thought I need to post the video but I think it works well like this the world is an abundant place I'm so grateful for everything in my life I have more than enough money always. The universe always has my back. So basically that's a, another good belief. The universe is giving you whatever you want as long as you do your part. The, the, the universe always will do its part if you do your part. And your part is to become a vibrational match to what you want. Okay. So I can continue with this but I leave it for now. That's a good start. And then habits. Like what are some habits that he does? Like eating very healthy working working out on a consist cons consistent basis by the way you can also be more specific if you want i mean the more specific you can be the better and i would say like for working out on a consistent pay basis three times a week eating very healthy having two green smoothies a day traveling all six weeks for 10 days and you start you want to start doing some of these things but of course again it's not about perfection you cannot change your whole self like just because you write it down you want to commit to the things that you can commit but this is also for you as an inspiration right and then you start implementing these things step by step because for example traveling all six weeks for 10 days I cannot do that right now but I want to and I will but I keep it in there as an inspiration because first you have to see it before you before you get it actually in your reality right so I start seeing it in my mind and get excited about it and what else dressing dressing for success so like dressing really really well every day even uh, when I'm at home and sometimes it's a bit hard now you see I have this nice shirt which I really love but sometimes it ca can get so hot here so it's a bit difficult to dress well but also dressing well I, I was thinking to actually talk about this on one point uh, dress for success is a really important concept but success means for everyone something different so in LA for example to be successful you don't need to dress like with, with a shirt and a suit. It's more like you're kind of casual. You know, like being casual, looking casual, and having money is quite common there. So it's kind of almost like a sign for success if you're like casual and you have like confidence. So 
how to dress is for everyone different. And um, what else? What else could we do? Also think about yourself. What else can you do? Um, having a super clean apartment, which is a habit. Listening to inspiring podcasts or like audio programs day reading every day so these are some things let's uh, let's leave it here because as i said i will improve that so will you um the, oh, what's happening um you can also make this a bit nicer i think it would look nice if you know the written if you the question is like this and then the written is not that um, exactly so it looks nicer how does Oliver think and talk which are basically like the beliefs right but you describe it like he thinks very positive about himself and other people so he also talks about himself and other people very positive he's non judgmental and always always finds the good in people and then like uh, he's often talking about the amazing things that are coming his projects things he's grateful for um, what he appreciates about life and others um, what else and his wins and more so I, I, I will keep going with this but this is enough for right now you can also fill out as much as you want you can keep it short you can make it longer it's completely up to you how does Oliver feel on a daily basis that's important because the, se the secret is feeling right how this person like also remember back your vision um, if you need help with that go back read your vision look at the achievement board you anyway should do that do all of this to just remember again and and feel into how you know how it feels how your vision feels your achievement board so now then we go here he feels he feels just so incredibly lucky and blessed every ev every single day he's full of energy so incredibly excited about life and everything that's coming every day feels like Christmas wondering what amazing things are coming today he's so grateful and appreciative about everything in his life and so thankful f for this amazing life he lives now it feels like like a like a dream and he's joyful filled and so positive nothing can make I don't know how to write that he's oozing probably not like that oozing he's oozing positivity and happiness there that's good for now so you get the point right now you have this one it's it's gonna be beautiful it just you know it just makes you feel good you're already using the law of attraction just by writing that so let's make that like this and then we have something right if you want you can also put the questions away and make everything a bit smaller all up to you that's your creative freedom however you want to make it 
it looks nice for you um, yeah so that's it then you have this one you know, creating your story with the pictures and some short descriptions and the future then you write that you fill that out and then we go to the affirmations so that's uh, inspiration from especially the beliefs so you can you can literally take your beliefs and use them as um, affirmations um, you can also use these affirmations whatever resonates with you these are actually older ones so I have I have to change it I used them before I always think and act today I feel heroic confident and excellent we'll create momentum tomorrow in the next day I feel unstoppable I okay this is actually from my mentor these are not my own so you can use them as inspiration um, some of them from are, are too harsh for me but again it's it's very individual however you want to feel right um, exactly and otherwise you just take your beliefs and put them in here and you don't need to have so many just like have the most important ones if you want to focus on making money put that in I always have enough money money is coming into my life in abundant ways um, my money is growing and growing more money comes into my life I'm a money magnet if you want to be an artist a full-time artist I'm write it down I'm a full-time artist I feel amazing and I'm incredibly proud of my of my art I'm selling more and more art more and more people are attracted to my art um, people are fighting to get a piece of my art people pay thousands for for my art and they're so incredibly grateful and happy to have a piece of my art or a piece or have my art own my art um, and then yeah and then your beliefs everything always works out for me uh, I'm so grateful for everything in my life but you read that every day and these are more generic ones but they make you feel good because again you want to feel good and then you can have also specific ones about who you are and remember this is your char character right so you are this person so it has to be in the I am statement I am that and it's happening now not I will be an artist I will be a full-time artist I will make lots of money no 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 it's like I am I'm making it I am living it because you're creating your new char character very important so do that and then we are actually done um, then you have all your sheets let me check um, school community then you should have all your sheets so then you have all your sheets you have the vision you have to become your own hero and your personal transformation right then if you want you can just copy paste and put them all in one the vision first then the achievement board and then creating your new story then you have like a kind of like a, how do you say a whole document with your vision in different ways described creating a new story having the achievement board and then you want to look at it every single day every single day especially in the beginning later on maybe once per week but do it do it every single day and then if you feel inspired to change some things and add things do that or take things out that's also completely fine because you are basically crafting your vision you make it more clear you make it better and then again things in your life will happen that will make it more clear of what you want and don't want because maybe you think you wanted some things but you actually don't want them completely fine you're a creator so stay flexible and keep changing things adjusting things and on one point you will also see like some things will stay the same some things will change others will stay right because there's like a core and my core has been always uh, abundance and freedom and traveling and there are things that yeah that changed that were important for me before for example like buying a Rolex or having a car and these things always came back to me on one point but when I felt actually really good they disappeared because that's like now that I feel really good I don't even feel like I need a like a watch on my wrist I mean why it's not gonna make me feel better because I feel already amazing but I know that traveling makes me feel amazing or having even a better relationship than now or having amazing friends with me or eating healthy or having you know being in the Sun every single day on the beach that will make me feel amazing right so your dreams your vision is always like what would feel so amazing if I would have it or live it or be it or do it you know like what would feel so amazing for me okay let's talk about the summary so first you're in control you can literally rewrite your whole story you are the creator of your life right you can do that you can rewrite the whole the past the present the future I mean you're living in the present but you can rewrite the past you can rewrite the future and then you will be differently in 
depressant, right? You will, you will, because if you feel better, if you if you feel better, you think more more positive thoughts, and you will take better action. Tell a different story. Create a new empowering story. Story. Tell the story that you want to tell your kids. Some of you have kids, others not. But tell yourself the story about your life, how it's gonna be. As so inspiring and so amazing that you want to tell your kids and your kids will be like, wow. Even if you don't have kids, imagine it. If you have on one point kids. Maybe you don't want to, but then uh, think about other kids. <laughs> but you imagine the, the kids like looking up and listening to you and it's like, wow. This is so amazing, so inspiring. Right? Really, you create your own hero's journey. Then exercise. Fill out the my story and affirmation sheet like I showed you. If you haven't done it, do it after the video. Words. The way you speak is a strong indicator of how you think, but at the same time help you to create and focus. So, yeah, words, exactly what you speak, shows you where you're at, what you believe right now, but also helps you. You can use the word consciously to create and focus on what you want. Summary to create. So, actually, we are now done with the first week, which has been amazing. Maybe if, there, if you need anything else, um, let me know, maybe I can add another module, otherwise we will go to week two, to the next mo module, which is about the power of emotion, which is super important, we make a deep dive in emotions, because some of us, they, our emotions control us, we have so many emotions, maybe negative emotions, or things that come up, triggers, so it's hard for us to actually feel good and be in control of our life, so we will talk about that in module two, it's going to be extremely important and powerful, because in the end of the day, what makes all of this work is your, how you feel, your emotions. And if your emotions are in control of you and you have a lot of negative momentum, it's going to be really, 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 really hard to make anything positive happen in your life. But of course, we talked about emotions also already in this, in this module, in this week. And next week, next module, we're going to make a deep dive to really master the art of emotions. And let's have a summary of this uh, of week one just just to see again what we covered so first who do you listen to listen to who that's something you should answer you should know that now who should you listen to I give you five seconds say it out loud yes hopefully you got it you should listen to people that were where you're at and are where you want to be Right? Listen to people that actually did it. The biggest secret, the law of attraction is always working. Now you know how to take advantage of it. Right? That was the second video, the biggest secret, which is the law of attraction and how your mind creates everything you want. Cultivating a success mindset. Success thinking is a habit. Exactly, we talked as specifically about feeling successful and how to s start thinking more positive and thoughts that make you feel successful. And then we went into actually creating your vision. Now you have a powerful vision that pulls you forward. If you haven't done it, do it. It's so important. So, so, so important. Without this, this is the foundation. The first week is the foundation of all of this. You need to have it ready in order to make sense for the other modules. And then become your own hero. Celebrate your wins, achievement board, and success. Sure, right? Yeah, we talked about success again. How to, how to feel actually... More successful is by acknowledging what you already achieved, celebrating your wins, and we also do that with the achievement board and the success chart. And then rewrite your story, which is was today, telling a different story and creating the most powerful version of yourself. That's what we're doing. And then again, create all these three. To cr create your vision, become your own hero, and rewrite your story. All the sheets from there, put them together, and then look at it every single day. So if you like this video, if you like this course and you like the week one so far, leave a testimonial at manifestingdreams.com and win special prizes. Then let's end with a quote. That's Neville Goddard. Goddard. I don't even know how to say it, but you see his name? And he's super inspiring. I discovered him, I think, a year ago. Before that, I never heard about him, but he has some really cool concepts. Change your conception of yourself and you will automatically change the world in which you live. Do not try to change people. They are only messengers telling you who you are. Revalue re yourself and they will confirm the change. So people are a re reflection of ourselves. So the whole outside world is a reflection of how you see yourself, the conception you have of yourself. And that's what we did in this whole, in this whole 
video actually we we change the conception of yourself the way you see yourself and I, as I said even you can even change how you saw the past or you how, how you think the past happened because our, our memory is not 100% correct and it's a powerful quote I love I love this quote instead of trying to change the outside try, try to change not try change the way you look at yourself and the concept you have of you of, over yourself so that's enough let's get to work fill out all the documents if you haven't done yet otherwise congratulations you did it week one is done write in the community that you've done it that you watched the whole week one and let's celebrate together because that's another win that's 100 percent a win because these were a lot of videos and a lot of work you've done so congratulations and we'll talk soon peace